Well, hello. Welcome to the THC Show. I'm your host, Neil Magnuson. This is the show on Pot TV where we talk about THC, but in this case, THC stands for Truth, Hope, and Change, which are also pertinent to THC uh, with respect to cannabis because that's where we need to find some truth, have some hope, and get some change. On the show today, we'll have 8 out of 10 Glenn from Canamatch.ca. We've got Doobie Dan coming on. He's going to preview a, a new song off his new album for you. Uh, we'll take a visit out to the CSP Healing Wave RV. And, of course, we'll talk about a lot of different things on the show. For one thing, uh, it's another year in the books. Uh, we're three years now, coming up in two days, to when we opened the store here on Cordova Street after three and a half years of running the cannabis substitution program from Van Du. Three years on Cordova that we've been waiting uh, for government approval, when we moved into the store, the city of Vancouver had passed a motion and our meeting with them resulted in us understanding that they would give us a license if we found a storefront and could move our program off the streets. But as it turned out, they wouldn't give us a license until Health Canada did. So it's been over two and a half years since we applied to Health Canada with a very comprehensive and compelling application to allow us to provide low barrier access to cannabis that included not just the giveaways that the CSP had been doing for three and a half years, but also the sale of cannabis to support the CSP and to provide money to pay for the storefront and the utilities and the staffing and all of that sort of stuff. However, like I said, Health Canada has been dragging their feet for all of this time. And in fact, another year is now in the books with our public health emergency, this pandemic or epidemic of overdose deaths due to a poison drug supply. Eight years into this epidemic. We have been providing for six and a half of those years what is by far the best solution. We've rescued hundreds of people from addiction with our high-dose edibles. High-dose edibles are able to get people through withdrawal. That's the big barrier to getting off of hard drugs. That's what we've been demonstrating and proving for over six years, almost six and a half years. And yet the federal government refuses to, to uh, approve our application or give us an exemption or really acknowledge us in any way other than they were recently compelled by the federal health minister to at least give us some response to our recent submission to them, which they said we were required to do, so here we're doing it, and the, and the submission to you is, is that it's all still under review. Meanwhile, people are still dying, over six a day here in British Columbia. And the numbers speak volumes to what's really going on. The authorities are somewhat stymied by how it is that it's not the downtown east side that is really the epicenter of this epidemic. You would think that it is. All these visibly addicted people, all these people using what is obviously, you know, accessed through the poison drug supply, and yet only 14% of the overdose deaths that have happened in British Columbia have happened here on the downtown east side uh, in this past year. 86% of the people dying of fentanyl overdoses are dying in their homes in all sorts of different demographics across uh, this province. We have a, a viable solution for many of them if the government would allow it, but instead they won't. The reason they won't is corporate greed. They want to maintain their monopoly of artificially high prices in the government stores and the, and the, and the, and the outright pretty much banning of anything high dose edibles. You can get 10 milligrams. You get a drink with 10 milligrams, you get a chocolate bar with 10 milligrams, but that's the cap on their dose, allowable dose. That does nothing for people trying to get off of hard drugs. People trying to get through withdrawal, that excruciating hell-like journey that keeps people addicted to those substances, can easily be mitigated with high-dose cannabis edibles. Hundreds of people that we've rescued from addiction here report that they pretty much sleep through it. It got them off it. And then it was able to replace the use of it after the fact, as most of these people have underlying conditions that drive the use of those hard drugs in the first place. And cannabis high-dose edibles can pretty much do what any of those hard drugs can do for people. Not the smoked cannabis. You can't smoke enough cannabis. If you smoke three good joints of cannabis, that fourth one is a waste of money. It's not going to get you any higher. It's not going to do anything else for you. But you eat it where it goes through the liver instead of the lungs, and you can eat too much. You can eat way too much. Thankfully, it can't kill you, but you might wish you were dead. You might think you're going to die. That happens to lots of people. In fact, that's our biggest problem here, is that people accessing high-dose edibles that aren't familiar with them tend to eat too much, and many of them have a very uncomfortable experience and just don't want to do it again, which is really too bad. 
because if you start low and go slow, most people find the dose that works for them and then they can successfully accomplish the task of getting through withdrawal. Meanwhile, here in Vancouver, we've been providing cannabis as, as an alternative and an option to these hard drugs through the cannabis substitution program, but also through the pop-up protests that happen all across the city in different locations, uh, you know, ongoing. There was one on Saturday, a pop-up market at the Vancouver Art Gallery, International Joint Day, they called it. They were met by over 30 police officers armed with notifications from City Hall. I think I should probably read that to you. I think that would be something you'd be interested in, is what the city has to say about why they would be wasting our precious tax dollars and police resources to crack down on providing an option to the opioids rather than cracking down on the opioids that are available easily up and down Hastings Street and around this area. Not hard to find at all. Go for a walk around here. You'll be asked, do you want some up? Do you want some side? Do you want some down? Easy. In fact, it's evidence just how easy it is to get these drugs by just how many people are overdosing on them. It's incredible. But the government, and now including our new mayor in the city of Vancouver, has decided that they should crack down on these pop-up markets where low barrier access is the protest, is the key. That's what we're looking for. So here's what the city had to say in their little notice to people. Quite disgusting, I must tell you. Um, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Why don't I see it here right away? There it is. So the notice that was given to the vendors at the art gallery on Saturday said, we wish to advise you that members of the Vancouver Police Department will be present at the event you are organizing for June 4th, joint date, on Vancouver Art Gallery property. We have been in contact with City of Vancouver staff and are aware that this is an unlicensed and unsanctioned event being held on City of Vancouver property. I thought it was art gallery property. They should make up their mind. We have discussed your promotion selling over 75 vending tables for up to $250 each who suggests that there is an intention to sell cannabis at this event. All persons in Canada have a right to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly in sections 2b and c under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which is guaranteed to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be demonstrated just, demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. Section 1 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, that was section 1 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, our attendance will we respect the fundamental rights to protest against other considerations, including the need to maintain the peace and enforce the law. The Vancouver Police Department takes a measured approach in terms of utilizing federal, provincial, and municipal acts of law as a tool to stop illegal acts, including the unauthorized sale and possession of cannabis products. Police will be present and may take enforcement action against persons committing criminal code controlled drugs and substances act or cannabis control and licensing act offenses. If persons intend to sell cannabis, they are required to comply with all laws, including the Cannabis Control and Licensing Act requirements to possess a valid license permitting them to do so, which they don't offer, by the way, and to demonstrate that the cannabis for sale is legally sourced. Our intention is to prevent any need for enforcement action by being transparent about our approach. Yeah, they're telling us ahead of time they're not going to allow it. Regarding activities that are likely to be the subject of enforcement, we appreciate that persons or organizations purchasing a table at this event will likely be displeased if their expectations about the event are different than what was communicated by organizers. As such, we encourage you to engage with us regarding this event to ensure that your vision of the event is congruent with what enforcement responses can and reasonably be expected from the Vancouver Police Department. Our goal at the Vancouver Police Department is to assist event organizers, yes, to assist event organizers by collaborative, collaboratively together to ensure that all events, regardless of the subject matter, occur in a peaceful and law-abiding manner. Yeah, right. <coughs> Peace is a shit. They're murdering people. By restricting the access to high-dose edibles, it is continuing this overdose epidemic. And it's not just the deaths. We've had tens, over, over 12,000 deaths in the last eight years, seven years, in this province because of this poison drug supply driven ex entirely by government policy and fueled by the enforcement against the option of cannabis. It is literally extremely disgusting and it is literally 
murder. We've demonstrated here with the cannabis substitution program for six and a half years that we can rescue people from addiction. We can help them get off those drugs. Hundreds of people will testify to that. Yet the government remains silent. Yesterday, I emailed Councillor Rebecca Bly and asked for a meeting with her and Mayor Sim. We'll see if that happens. I tend to doubt that it will. With the previous mayor, I asked several occasions for a meeting and never got one. They really don't want anything to do with it because they're in bed with those people that are profiting off of cannabis sales. They have monetized this overdose epidemic and they are capitalizing on the so-called legalization of cannabis with fees, fines, and incredible restrictions that literally throw medical patients right under the bus. They're not included in Trudeau and the Trudeau cartel's so-called legalization. Legalization, after all, from the Trudeau cartel is not about medical. By their own definition, their stores is all non-medical, which is a bit crazy because it's like offering somebody an aspirin and saying, oh, by the way, it's non-medical. How does it become non-medical all of a sudden? Cannabis is of medical value over here, but all of a sudden it isn't of medical value over here? Give me a break. That's why people are buying it anyway. Sure, some people are just looking for the euphoria of the THC, but most people are looking for relief in their life. They're looking for something recreational. Something that can reset their being after a hard day's work or the stress of ongoing dramas in their life. That's medicine. A stress reliever? A sleep aid? An anti-anxiety potion? All medicine. It doesn't stop being medicine just because the government says it's non-medical. And many of the people who are accessing through the government stores are trying to seek medical relief. But those that really need it, those that need it in the form of high-dose edibles, those that can't afford the extreme prices that they have to pay, and the daily users who just don't have that kind of money, they're left without, they're left wanting, or they're left going to the unregulated underground marketplace where at least the prices are better, and you've probably got a better chance of having better cannabis as well. Pretty good chance the cannabis that you're going to get in the unregulated market is not going to be irradiated and it's not going to be using all of those pesticides and fertilizers that the government the suppliers are allowed to use. Some for sure. But we've never had a problem. There's never been a problem. In all the hundred years of prohibition here in Canada, with, with British Columbia being the lead, with seven to nine billion estimated sales of cannabis in the unregulated marketplace leading up to so-called legalization, we never had a problem. It was never an announcement by the government to watch out for the brown weed. There's never been hospital wards filled with people suffering from brown lung or cancer or anything else as a result of cannabis use. In fact, the, the actual truth about cannabis, which has been suppressed for decades, starts coming out. Over the last couple of decades, we've had lots and lots of scientific reports. We've got the American Medical Association coming out a couple of weeks ago and announcing that the long-term use of cannabis has significant ongoing benefits. Health benefits. This is a plant that is so dangerous that we need to use the criminal law to go after the biggest hammer in the toolbox. People need to be given criminal records and punished severely for being involved with something that provides long-term significant and lasting medical benefits. We got UCLA now coming out and saying that the risks associated with smoking cancer are not there for smoking cannabis. Well, duh, we've known that for a long time. Well documented that four to five million people die every 12 months globally because of the ingestion of commercial tobacco. The number one cause for hospitalizations in Canada are the effects of smoking commercial tobacco. Yeah, that's available easily. Sure, you have to be 19 years of age just like for cannabis. But you can get that in gas stations and grocery stores and drug stores and all kinds of different places clustered together right next to schools and rec centers. It doesn't matter. Easily available. A known carcinogen, a deadly killer that's easily available where cannabis 
a known medicine that's never killed anybody, that has long-term significant medical benefits for people, is highly restricted. And the government takes such a cut that it makes it impossible for people on low incomes to be able to access. We learned last week that the government is not just taking $10 or a dollar per gram. They're taking 10% of whatever the value of that gram is, whatever is more. It's disgusting. We've got a $1.5 billion surplus, a gut, a glut of legal cannabis sitting in warehouses that they can't seem to sell. We've got Canopy Growth now who's being kicked off the TSX. Their valuation has gone down from $55 in February of 2021 to $1.14 last Friday. Numerous layoffs and closures to the point where they're not even welcome on the stock exchange anymore. What does that tell you about our government legalization? They can't make a profit selling weed? Well, of course they can't when the cartel wants to take its big cut right off the top. And then so does the province. And then so does the municipality. And then they're forced into using outrageous packaging that costs a bundle as well. And then there's more fees and there's more taxes and there's more this and there's more that. And anybody gets caught, there's fines and there's this and there's that. And the government is making off like bandits, like they always did. The government's not our enemy, but they're sure not our friend. The government is the friend of the big corporations and they are our enemies. The big corporations that want to sell you their products. 419, I got so much more to say. But... <laughs> These things are serious, and they do take its toll on us. It's stressful. Thank goodness for cannabis. And when things are serious and when things are stressful, the reason we say thank goodness for cannabis is because cannabis allows for a little bit of levity. It brings a little bit of humor into most situations, causes a little bit of distraction and relief from the ongoing problems that we're having in our world. So 419... Roll them if you got them. Uh, if you don't, fill your pipe. If you don't got nothing, well, I guess we'll probably try to imbibe something on your behalf. And 419 means the next moment it's 420. And 420 means that Glenn Wells is here because he's always here. For, uh, well into our fourth year now, a couple, a couple more months, and we'll be at the, the end of the four-year mark with the THC show. And Glenn has been a staple through the whole thing. Come on in, Glenn. How are you yeah. doing, buddy? Good, Happy 420. You? Happy 420. Thank you so much. Wow, well, we got, uh, got some guests today. We got some guests today. Wow. We're going to bring them on shortly. Yes. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, I've been better. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know. <laughs> We've all been better. Well, you know, <laughs> I have some ongoing issues. And today's the day when I'm not going to imbibe in cannabis. Yeah. Just the way it is. That's, you've done that before. That's Michelle. my truth. I've, I've had to yeah. do that before. Yeah, you've done it before. you got to do what's but right. I you know, I, I, I'm a big believer in doing what's right. I will smoke for you. What are you smoking for me and for all those people uh, that don't have anything to smoke out there? Michelle's, um, um, oh, oh, what, oh what, what do you got the, the, this stuff the, here. Yes, that's up there. Michelle yeah. is a master hey, grower, by the way. This has got shot in it. Okay, we're just throwing it out to the crowd. Yeah, now. that's running out to the, 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 the people. <laughs> the, the amassed crowd that we have. Right? That vast sea of faces that you goes get, on beyond where yeah. the eye can see. Hello, everyone. You, you get 4,000 views every week, about. Do we? Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that nice? That's yeah. why we get 4,000 views every week. We bring this, <laughs> this is the star of the show right here, of course, always. Yeah. Is the cannabis. It's a, uh, we're going to have another guest on the show a little bit later on, too. This is true. This is right. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Uh, I love surprise right. guests. I love, yeah, I love surprise things, you know. Surprise things surprise are really things good. Are always good. Uh, we got this surprise <laughs> thing right here. Uh, this is from a good friend of ours in Ontario, uh, Robert Lamar, who's uh, <sighs> Thank you, Robert. Uh, been going through some you know health issues of his own. And uh, uh, he's, he's such a kind soul and a generous human being and what have you. And he loves the show and he loves you, Glenn, apparently. Yeah. Yep. Because he sent you this. Thank you. It's yeah. diamonds, right? I think it's and, you diamonds. Know, we're going to try it out after the baby damn sings because he brought his puff coat. Yeah, I did. so because that's the thing. You see, I like surprises. I didn't tell Glenn that Robert had told me he was sending me some diamonds that he wanted Glenn to smoke on the show. <laughs> so when Glenn got here, I said, hey, Glenn, look what I got for you. And he goes, oh, damn, I don't have my ability to smoke that. <laughs> 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 no, that's right. We'll do 
universe being what it that. is. And then, and then, we uh, do have now the ability to do that, and yeah. so you are going to do that, so that's, that's great. And there's another one, another device right there, too, so yeah, yeah, so we got okay, a couple so of yeah, we got it covered. It's going to work out, yeah. yeah. What do you got over there? Oh, his oh, five oh, person. Oh, oh, my God. You want me to show that on the show? Yeah. I mean, you could do it when you come on, but how about this thing here? There you go. Okay, so that's... uh. That's obviously a joint holder, uh, a multiple joint holder. <laughs> I smoked from that on, on, the, on his video. With we got, we got this uh, joint holder as well that was provided for me last week. We there could, you go. You could put that one well, there. Yeah. Now, we, now we got <laughs> six going on and there. It's supposed to be in the pinky spot though. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it won't fit in this pinky spot. Yeah, yeah, but it, yeah. but it was properly designed yeah. to put it right there. There you go. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the dinky, if you will. I guess because that's it, the first time you call it that. You I didn't know. Do that last week, last week I you would know. not say the word DP. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. No, because it's a it's a road clip for your pinky. It's, it's a road clip for your pinky, let's, 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 which, which which means it should be called a rinky. Yeah. And you know, okay, don't you think a road clip for your pinky should be a rinky? But Some anyway, it, it needs a little bit more glue. This is coming from. Uh, the, the, no, 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 no. This, yeah. this, this, this is, is, is coming yeah. from the, uh, the the Heisen herb. Yeah, the Heisen herb people Dan from the Michelle. from Michelle uh, or Joint Cox. Yeah, and, well, it, her uh, name is Michelle. Her name is Michelle. Yeah, so there's not, not the Michelle that I know and you know, but it's the other Michelle that you do just met That's last right. weekend. That's Not, not so, one yeah. of the several other Michelles that I know. Let's back with <laughs> He's a rookie apparently with this thing. Right now, Woo! Right. just jumped right out of your hand. Well, I didn't have it on you, there. You pinched it. Yeah, I'd jump too if you pinched me with that. See, there you go. You're supposed to do that, right? And then That's you can play on your phone or play your game. Or Drive your, your car, design, right? <laughs> Only, of course, if cannabis doesn't impair. We talked about that right, on last week's show. Today. <laughs> well, I don't have much choice. <laughs> yeah, you got up in the air. The room's becoming a little hot, by as, as, as you speak, can see yeah. on the screen. There. Yeah, it's it's getting it. smoky. It was, <laughs> it was smoky last week. Those, yeah. those Heisenberg people—they uh, like to smoke uh, weed. Yep, I love it. Yeah, that was fun. Well, what else is new? What's new with Canamatch.ca? Uh, well, we I love that ad. You love Mike, Mike, yeah. Mike, Are you wanting to go to Pound Town? <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to Pound Town? If you want to be the mayor yeah. of your own salacious desires, <laughs> go to Canamatch.ca. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. You want to pound somebody? You want to be pounded? You want to fuck somebody before you smoke weed? You want to? You, like, you, you want to smoke, smoke some weed? Have you, you fuck somebody? You yeah. want to just? You want to just chat with somebody who's cute and you think they're nice or whatever? Wow. Go yeah. ahead to uh, yeah. Canamatch.ca. Uh, I, I think it's a great way also to uh, uh, to find weed if you need it, if yeah. you're new in town, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, get yourself a profile on Canamatch.ca. Find out who else is there. It's yeah, free. to do a profile, it's free. Yeah, and you're gonna get 50 credits too when you when you sign up. So and there's an app. Yeah, and... yeah you can do lives in there. You can be live in there and everything. You know all kinds of stuff. So beautiful. Uh, but yeah, it's a great place. And now it's really nice to have Mike read it. Uh, um, he is be, so funny. He's going to be doing it some more this week. So nice. There'll be some promos put down and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So he is so I, funny. I, I thank you very much, Mike. That is really, really nice to have a famous comedian doing kind of match stuff. So and, and doing it so well. Yeah. Oh, it's great. He makes me laugh. Funny. Yeah, I was laughing my head off watching him. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Check that out if you can. The ad for uh, kind of match. Let's see from. Uh, the snack show is on this yeah, the, the snacks of life. The snacks of life. Yeah, the snacks, the snacks of, of life. life. Oh, goes on really well. Apple and on YouTube. Nice. Right. <coughs> and it, it airs on Fridays, I believe. Right. Yes. Yep. Yep. Friday morning, seven ten. So there's a few interesting things coming up. Yeah, we got. There's uh, the, the glass gathering. Yep. The Great Canadian Glass Gathering is back. Yes. Uh, not in its original location, so don't just go to the original location and expect to find it there. It's not going to be there. But if you did, you'd only be 15 yeah. minutes away You're from not the too next far away. location. <laughs> so the the new location. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that they're working on as we speak. Yeah. Uh, so that, and that's always such a blast. And that's on the, uh, uh, coming up on June 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th. 25th. Yes. Thursday, Friday, And they're going to have the uh, glass games. Yeah, glass uh, blowing. They're gonna obviously glass blowing. It's an amazing event it's if you've 50, ever gone. draw, I do believe, too. So. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds of that going on. And, and there's a great opportunity to, to bug your own LP. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, Redbeard went legal. <laughs> Can't blame him, you know. I mean, everybody <laughs> wants to be legal. Uh, maybe he can, maybe he can get the system to change for the better from within. Uh, I'm sure that's what he's hoping. That's what we're hoping as well. In the meantime, you can go bug him about being an LP and yeah. give him a hard time. I mean, he loves being, 
Yeah. And people giving him a hard time. I know that. And, and the Vancouver won't be able to send him a letter that says you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> he could probably do it. You know, he could probably he, come down probably there and, it, yeah. with his other LP buddies and they could set up a little marketplace and they could try to charge more money than people are, <laughs> made, are able to pay. And, and the medical <coughs> users would come and have a look and go, but what about us? And, you know. So, yeah. But anyway, go support the great, great Canadian glass gathering. Yeah. Uh, Redbeard's an awesome human being. I'm sure he's doing the best he can with what he thinks is the right thing to do, and maybe he's right. Who, who it's knows? The, it's the weekend right after uh, Father's Day, because Father's Day and, and, is and right day. before uh, Cannabis Day. You're right before, yeah. So which right brings us to Cannabis Day. Yeah. So we got Cannabis Day coming up. I hope we're going to really kick it this year. Uh, we really need to come back with a vengeance in all these things. Now that the city of Vancouver has shown their true colors, and they're going to use the Vancouver Police Department to try to enforce the Cannabis Act against the protests against the Cannabis Act, Shameful, shameful, shameful. We need to unite and get together and protest. The only way that. that we beat these guys is being a big group. If That's you're right. like three or four people, then the cops are going to come in. You guys come down to Cannabis Day and support us. The more tables that are there, the harder it is for them to kick us out. That's right. All right? So try and if they try, us. and yeah. if they try, and we're there as a united large group standing up against them, speaking truth to power, this is the <coughs> video that we've been craving for all of our two decades worth of activism and, and protests that we've Where had here, two and a half down, decades. Yeah. We've gone into all of these protests, the 420, the Cannabis Day, the Global Marijuana March, always thinking that we may have enforcement come down on us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're poking the bear, obviously, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And more than happy to have it happen. Like, if they want to come and try to enforce uh, the law against people at 420, Give it a good shot. Come on down. Give it your best try. Let's see what happens. Let's see when the actual people outnumber the police and we can speak truth to their power and they got nothing other than to say, well, it's against the law. Yeah. It's against the law, but the law is more than an ass. The law is murdering people. The law is restricting access to sick people. Yeah. How rude is that? You know, you always you, you grow up and you hear about you know, people care, huh? taking things from babies and how horrible that is. How about taking medicine yeah. from sick people? You don't rob old people. Oh, yeah, man. it is so you rob disgusting. Old people, go to jail, and they don't like that too often. The greed and the corruption that's rampant in government when it comes to, to cannabis is so disgusting, and it is murder. That that's why we're continuing to protest. That's why I continue to do this show. That's why we're not going to stop doing low barrier access, no matter the fact that we're facing charges coming up in October, the fact that we were broken into again. Yeah. We had somebody come by and throw a rock it's right there through the, through the front windshield. I got him on video. I think I know who it is. They didn't get in though, right? They didn't the, get wind, in. the windshield stopped. Them, I right? had somebody get in the uh, uh, just the other day, two, three days ago. They pried open the side window, that extra inch and a half that yeah. it locks, yeah. so that they could wiggle their way in there. They stole everything worth value of, of any value, but there wasn't much of anything. No, yeah, we don't no, leave no, anything no, in there. Yeah. But I had a new mode, a new uh, horn rather, yeah. you know, that was up on the front dash. I had uh, a fancy ashtray, something like that, that was on the engine cover. I had a few other things there. I had one of my uh, my mustache tokers that uh, Gibson Glass makes that was up there. That's gone. That's gone. Yeah. They took every little tiny thing that they could wow. the way that they go. You know, wow. uh, this is probably our eight to tenth break in. Wow. Uh, in the three years that we've been here, uh, you know, and vandalism, and we've had uh, graffiti <coughs> written on the RV, fire calling bomb. it names. <laughs> we were firebombed, yeah. you know, broken into, raided, arrested, charged. We've had the CSU here threatening us. Uh, you know, it just goes on and on. I mean, I, I have resolved myself. The night before this last break-in in the RV, my son and I were looking at it to make sure it was stable for the night and commented that, it's going to get broken into again. Yeah. There's no way around it. If, it. if it's left in this neighborhood, it's going to get broken into again. Yeah. I was parking up by the police station. didn't seem to matter. Three times, vehicles broken into right across from the police station, one block up the street. I was driving it two miles away for a while, taking a cab back and then go, taking a cab early in the morning to go get it and bring it back here. Mm -hmm. I showed up in the cab one morning, you know, in a fairly decent neighborhood. And here's some guy got his head and his body stuck in the side window of the RV there. He's got a knife at his feet and, oh, wow. you know, stealing my stuff there. <laughs> it's just not safe anywhere. Um, why I've decided to leave it parked where we leave it, where we have it every day, is because I've got a video camera on it. Um, there's video up at the police station as well, and that's what I thought. If I park it up there, the police are going to be able to, you know, share their video with me. Yeah. 
but they won't share their video. They won't show me who it is in case we might recognize them and be able to do something about it. If you don't have a $10,000 loss involved with what happened, they don't care. They, don't care. Oh. So they tell you, go to ICBC, put in a report. That's all. We're not yeah. going to share the video. We're not going to look into it. We don't care. They won't give you a file number for ICBC? Well, they probably would, they sure. Probably yeah, yeah. If I reported it broken file. into, they would give me a file number yeah, and they would yeah. go to ICBC. Yeah. But it's not worth it to go to ICBC over and over again. My rates have already shot up because of all of this. Yeah. Uh, you know, just, yeah. but at least this last time they didn't break anything. They jimmied that window open, but I had to jimmy it to get it to shut back again. And, you know, nothing was broken. But uh, <coughs> it's all very depressing because. We're doing yeoman's work here. We're, we've been demonstrating day after day after day. If, if, if Health Canada or the authorities would just come here and have a, have a look, pay attention, interview some of the people that we're helping, mm -hmm. my goodness, I mean, they would have a license for us that afternoon yeah. if they had any type of a heart or soul at all. Yeah. But they don't. They, they sit up there in Ottawa and they think they know better. Well, they sit up there in Ottawa and they follow their instructions. Yes. Which have to be whatever you do don't allow for any lower barrier access to cannabis than what we already got because yeah. we need to make all that money so we can pay the government all their taxes and fees and we can still make a fortune on the other side of it which <laughs> if you look at canopy growth isn't happening anyway no 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 they're gonna have to let them pop in so they can start making some money fifty five dollars to a dollar and fourteen cents in two years two and a half years <laughs> wow eh wow yeah what are they doing wrong? Uh, yeah, well, we're trying to tell them what they're doing wrong. They're keeping the prices way too high. They're irradiating their weed. They're giving customers no confidence in what they're doing. And obviously, if that's the case, there's going to be a thriving underground marketplace yep. that will out outdo what they're doing in the government stores. Sure, you can walk into a nice store and safely buy something instead of, you know, perhaps going to a basement suite or around a back alley or meeting in a shopping center parking lot and you never know what's going to happen. You never know what you're going to get. And, you know, there's all that going on. But it's still better for most people, as is being shown by the declining sales and market yep. share of these places. Yep. They're still more prepared to, to continue with the, the, the risks that are involved with the unregulated and market. And invested in that company, now they're fucking shares. Well, they're the losers, eh? But they're they, the losers. Yeah, yeah but they, they could have been somebody that's new to stock market well right? sure yeah right. they're they're relatively innocent people for the most part yeah for the most part the, right. the, the ceos the management the ownership of these companies they're not uh -huh. losing that money yes. that, that 55 to a dollar yeah. 40 they sold their shares long uh -huh. time ago yeah you know yeah. when they knew it was high yeah and and they're not losing any money they're the ones that get all that money that people paid for those shares to begin with they're the ones who spent it on buildings and cars and trips and on machinery and equipment and all the rest of the stuff they spend this stuff on and then the shareholders lose the money yeah so you know and the government they're guaranteed they got it they got such a deal they don't lose nothing they don't care every pound of, or every gram of why do they go by grams anyway I don't know. why do they say 1.5 billion grams of weed are sitting in storehouses getting old and becoming useless well why don't they talk in terms of pounds? They're saying that Fire and Flower has filed for protection. For bankruptcy protection. There you go. This is going and on that, all over the place. That was June the 6th, so that's what, two days ago? Yeah, yeah two, yeah, days, two ago. days ago. Thank you. Um, many of the uh, the smaller companies have not been able to handle it. Uh, there's there's the, the smaller, not just the smaller businesses, but for the most part, the smaller businesses involved in the cannabis uh, legal marketplace are, are, you know, suing the government because... Yeah. The business uh, practices that they're using to deal with the cannabis industry are far more restrictive and, yeah. and uh, yeah, oppressive than for any other industry, yeah. including the alcohol industry, including yeah. the cigarette industry, including the pharmaceutical <coughs> industry. Because all of those. They don't want you to be healthy. They want you to get drunk and smoke. Well, they cigarettes. want to make money. Yes. And they right. make money off of people's ill health. Yeah. You know. Yes. And uh, so, what else we got? Um, we got uh, cannabis day coming up. That's yeah. uh, like. A month away now, no less than that. To, wow, four weeks from Saturday, I guess, the last Saturday. Is that right? When was that? Cannabis, cannabis Day, July 1st? Yes, July 1st. Four, four weeks from this past Saturday. Yep. Wow. Yep. Uh, there's yes, vendor so. spots available, always free spots available. Nobody no, has to pay if I they think don't it's want going to be pay. On Monday. Because today's the 8th. If we go back seven days, it's the 1st. So it should be a Monday. But there's 31 days. Is there 31 days? Okay. 
What is yeah, it? I'm pretty sure it's a Saturday this year. It is a Saturday? Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure right, it's a yeah, Saturday. Right. Thanks. Before. If not, I was going to show up on no, Saturday yeah. and wonder what the hell was going on. You're doing, oh, okay, the Doobie Dan's going to be Doobie Dan, who will be on our show momentarily, yep. and he's going to be there. Yeah. Uh, probably doing more off of his new album as well. Uh, we're going to have lots of different bands. We're going to have really good speakers. There's going to be vendors there. There's yep. going to be cannabis sales there. Damn it, I'm going to sell cannabis there. Yep. I know some of the vendors are a little bit afraid of this latest uh, uh, edict from the government, and I'm not. Uh, I say bring it on. Uh, bring it on when there's enough of us to stand up to you bullies, mm -hmm. you know, and yep. there will be a cannabis day there. But uh, I'll certainly be there. The CSP will be there, and we are not going to deny people proper access, low barrier access on cannabis day. So many people come to these protests that we have Knowing that that's where they can get a hookup, yep. you know, yep. and and we're and, not going to let them down. Where they get a good deal if they, because they're on <coughs> they're on disability and they can't well, go to a government store. Absolutely, or they might be able to buy a month's supply with what they have, little money that they have, and help them out for a whole month. Right, it's so. extremely important to people. Yeah. I, I I hear about it all the time when we're going for these rallies. I've been down there, and we, some people have been selling ounces like for fifty bucks, right? Yeah. 50 or well, 60 we have that bucks, going on here yeah. as well. And, yeah, so you know that's great for somebody who is on a disability and. He needs to be able to smoke that, you know, at the most, maybe uh, an ounce would last a week or two weeks, at, at, you know, for a heavy smoker, maybe a month for a light smoker. So, so like we always have, like I always have, like the cannabis culture uh, crew has always done, mm -hmm. we're not going to back down. We're yeah. going to stand up for those people that can't stand up for themselves. We are going to speak truth to power and we are going to be resilient and relentless in how we do this because we cannot stop. We will not stop. People are dying. People are sick and they need help. And the government is corrupt, and that in itself is enough to keep me going. Even if people weren't being hurt as badly as they are, even if it wasn't murder, this is wrong. It is very, very wrong. For public servants in a so-called free country that has the reputation that we're supposed to have around the world, for our government to think it's okay for public servants to restrict access to nature's best medicinal herb for no good reason other than justifying it through the previous reefer madness of the past, to say, what about the children? Oh my God, it's an unregulated supply. It must be dangerous. No, this is wrong. This deserves to be protested, and we are not going to stop protesting, period, nope. until they get until it they right. It together, and they can yeah. take me out, and they can take a number of other people out, and there will always be people filling our shoes. There will be more and more people inspired. In fact, I believe for every one of us that they take out, there's another dozen people that are inspired by that that step up and join the team. And you should all be part of the team as well. There's no better place to be. It's the right side of history. In the end, we're going to win this. And in the end, the government is going to be exposed as being so wrong, so deceitful, so corrupt, so full of shit, that they'll be embarrassed for years and decades to come. That's my that's my thing. Anyway, we got a guest yeah, yeah, that's yeah. coming on the show. Yeah, I think he's yeah. anxious to get on here. He probably is. He's excited oh. about his new album. All right, uh, he's been on the show before. Uh, I think he's going to bring in his own chair. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to move the camera. And uh, yeah, Doobie Dan, uh, what a guy! He's been uh, smoking weed for a long, long time. In fact, he smoked so much weed that when he was growing up, they called him Doobie Dan. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, he lived up to that name, let me tell you. I think he was. Tell me your story. You were the youngest of some brothers. <coughs> you know, you know, you know, things to get here. All right. Just here. Oh yeah, you need that. Unless you want to do make it sure too. he's in the shot here. Yeah. No. So, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Move it over a little bit. I, I'm moving over a little bit. Okay, there you go. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I'm stuck with something. Uh, let's see. Is okay, Pat, three? you can move. Is it just count three? There you go. Oh, okay. There you go. Pat. We'll keep the 420 behind. Oh uh, no! Just grab the uh, the middle thing yeah, and just move. Yeah. I mean, I we're good. We're there. You guys can. We're good. Good. We're good. We're good. A lot of love in the room. You're just missing your elbow, that's it. Well, I mean, I'm, no, put it back a little. No, put it back. I like the 420 behind my head there. So. <laughs> the 420 is right there. Now uh, we don't get 420. Oh, oh there, there you go. All right, There's a delay on, right. on our yeah, 10 seconds, right? <laughs> he was on it. There we all are. All Hi, right. Hi, baby, Dad. How's it going, Dad? Good, how are you guys? So, youngest of some brothers, yeah? I was one of the youngest, yeah, and uh, my brothers were all sitting at the table. Actually, that blaster there, it was one of those things. You stick a doobie inside here, and then yeah, you write yeah. it. Very familiar with those. So old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's old school. I was school. about five years old, and I came in, and my brother was smoking that. And uh, 
I was like, what's that thing? And he's like, oh, it's for my asthma. And I was like, I got asthma too. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, come over here. And he started this thing in my mouth and I took the biggest hoot and I got so baked. <laughs> and then from there on, I would just like start stealing roaches here and there. And I found a little pipe. And so I, who labeled you Doobie Dan? Um, one of my other bros, Jamie, one of the guys that taught me how to rap actually. Right. Um, he named me Doobie. We were, we were searching for a rap name for me forever. I see. And then he came over. We had this big list of names. We were looking through, searching for a name. And then I had like 17 joints beside me. And I was rolling on the desk. And he's like, Doobie Dan. Yeah, <laughs> come see. Yeah, yeah. Usually those names do just, they, they just come yeah. forward. You know, yeah. And there it is, you know. Yeah, and when you're having a kid, you might, you know, wonder what's your name going to be. But it just seems to come to you. It does. Yeah. There's, a, there's a process involved. And it's creativity. You're creating it inside your mind. You're putting it out there into the universe. And then the universe provides. It was the same thing with the THC show. Uh, they had convinced me I should do a show for quite a while. And, uh, and I needed to have a name for it. Yeah. And uh, I... Started a lot, a list like you, I had a big list going on, and one day it just sort of came to me, THC, truth, hope, and change. Yeah. Man, that really does speak to what I'm trying to talk about here, mm -hmm. and uh, it fit, and it just sort of jumped off the page there, and there we, there we are. So, um, and, and so what have you been doing with your rap career since I, then? I actually just released an album. Um, um, is this your second, third, first? It's my first full album. First, first, first album. album. My nice. first CD I released was in 2014, that was just an EP, a short CD. Right. This is my first full album. We did everything ourselves. Rude Gang Entertainment is the team I'm on. Nice. I'm part of Status Crew and Rude Gang Entertainment. Status Crew is here. And you've been playing at many of the events uh, recently as well. You, yeah. Every, you were at the Can of Love. Pretty you know? much every month, Rosie's been putting me on for the, the Farmer's Market. Right. So, and then no, nothing new this, this month coming up will be Canvas Day. Yeah, I'll be there. Right on. Yeah, and so you got I mean, new material for that. At least it'll be raining. <laughs> hey, careful. careful. So it it, it can rain here. In July? <laughs> it can. <laughs> Have we ever had a July with zero rain? I don't think so. Maybe. <laughs> I don't think so. So be careful, boys and girls. Like, uh, don't you know, we don't want to jinx yeah, anything yeah. here. We're really hoping for a better day than 420 weather-wise. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's awesome. Um, so the new album, tell me a little bit about it. Uh, is it all cannabis related songs? Where yes, do they it's find all, it? It's all, I guess for, with Doobie Dan, it all has to be, eh? Yeah, it's all cannabis related. I came nice. up with the album title, Apollo 420. Nice. Um, every song on there is like somehow about weed. I wanted to get all these weed songs out because I got a bunch of more tracks that I have ready to go for a new project. And, and this will be your first single that you're releasing is what you're going to do no. today? No, this no, song no. is not on the album, actually. Oh, I'm going to okay. be releasing it, I'm thinking, possibly on Orange Shirt Day. I see. I, I, yeah. So we don't get an exclusive here. So it's like uh, uh, yes. Yes. I yeah. should, you do, because no. it's not, it, well, yeah. I have the beat here, and I'm going to wrap it live for you guys. So right. Yeah, yeah. And it's when do you want to do that? Check. I can do it anytime. You want to do it right now? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> You want me to move? You want to be in the middle here? No, it's all good. All right. do, you, do you want to have a, a puff of your diamonds? And do you want one too? And then, you know, would that help you with your After, song? he said. After, okay. After, yeah. yeah we'll I, my I, should, I should have left that up to you. Got the, the producer of the show has all that stuff figured I out. I already asked that right? question. Yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> I used to. All right. I'm going to bring this on right now. Just while we're Whoa, yeah. I don't See, know. See, that's how that's supposed to work. And then, uh, we have one more. Anybody got, anybody got a joint? I got one over here. Heck okay. yeah. And this song, oh, that that I'm, this song that I'm doing for you guys today, I wrote about my mom, and I'm sure that we helped save her life. She's now, I think it's five years sober. Wow. And she just does. blazes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. I blazed with your mom. Right? <laughs> yes, I have. Like, oh, is that Doobie Mom? Yeah. yeah. Um, Doobie, Doobie Mom? You gave her the name Grams. Your Grams. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Even with the, the dinky. <laughs> the that I wrote, though, was about my mom. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Everyday 
twice was a joke. She told me on those cold nights when odd jobs couldn't pay the bills. Them lost thoughts, now they for real. Never had a father at all. He didn't even bother to call. If I could do it all again, I wouldn't. You always did your best to make do with any obstacle that come our way. I can't believe how far the you came. So proud to call you my mama. But it's so much thicker than drama. Water is your beverage of choice. And I love that you have such a powerful voice. Ask me about my mama. Fact, she came up in drama. Now she takes medicine for the doctor for post-traumatic stress disorder. Ask me about my mother. Fact, she told me to hold my brothers up high because they came from a low space. Back from my family, the world is a cold place. Grams is who you are to my daughter, but not me. You are my mother and father. That's a lot to take on for anyone. I just want to say thank you on every song. Tell them all, that's my son. He's killing it. Something wrong if you not feeling this. Get them kids. I'll be the loudest in the crowd. Stat group, crew gang. They about to shut it down. Huddle round to the front of the stage. Smudge like mama just lit that stage. This that make you feel good music. They wouldn't even bang it in the hood if they knew it. Truest shit that I ever wrote before. You're the best mom I can ever hope for more. My mother smokes a whole lot of butter. And I bet that there will never be another nair. Not a ask me about my mama. She came up in trauma. Now she takes medicine from the doctor for post traumatic stress disorder. Ask me about my mother. Back, she told me to hold my brothers up high because they came from a low space. Fight for my family. The world is a cold place. That's That's really good. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, 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 really good. Good. Yeah. that's nice. Great. All right, yeah. Yeah, 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 you can do that. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. All right, where's your puff go? Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's get it. <laughs> All right, yeah, thank you. All right, the dab tool? I'm not too sure you got the dab tool. No, yeah, we need a dab tool. We must Yeah, come on, somebody's got it. Someone's gonna have a dab tool. Nice. All right. Will that work as a dab tool? Yeah, it'll work. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, there you go. Grab some of Robert. Thank you, Robert. Right? Robert's part of the entourage here. Yeah. Uh, no, I meant like the person we. Oh, oh, yeah. Right. Thanks. Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen. All right. Mr. Allen, thank you very much, what? sir. For what? No, no. For, yeah. Robert Lamar. Oh, Lamar. Lamar. Sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I was asking you, you were going, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> Smells good, eh? All right, let's do that. Oh, smells like oh, it smells great. Oh, it's a little turpy. It's a little turpy, eh? A little turpy. It's probably a little trippy, too. Yeah. <laughs> great joke, peace. I've been dabbing since dabs were dabbing. <laughs> I've been dabbing since the hot knives would get hot. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was the OG way to dab back in the day. Hot knives, mm -hmm. yeah. Hot knives, yeah. It was, uh, oh, they went out. And then uh, Butter King came out. Nothing on it. And Butter King, uh, he, his brother Steve, he came up with a, uh, a torch lighter to hold a that he could add a titanium plate to. Oh. And that titanium plate, you could bend it over or hinge, it was hinged. So it would come down over the flame and you could heat it up until it got red and you let it cool down just the right amount. And then you put your little bit of butter on there with a yep. glass toker or just, you know, straight up. I remember and, uh, So that was the evolution from the knives to the, the torch lighter. And then from there, we started getting dab rigs. And then, oh my God, it just exploded. It went crazy. Yeah, it was, you know, all the yeah. glass blowers started making these dab rigs yeah. and they got more and more elaborate. And there's dab rigs out there that are worth oh, yeah. tens of thousands of dollars, maybe even a hundred thousand dollars. I don't know. I've got a fifteen hundred dollar one. Is that right? Yeah, I've seen it's called amazing a Broski ones. recycler, and I've got the Clark Matthews. I've got some Gibson glass also. Nice. So yeah, nice. Yeah, it's quite the world, and, and glass is so amazing. You know, there's just something about the feel of glass. You know, I got my glass toker here as well. Uh, you know, a glass pipe is just there's something so clean, so. Uh, environmentally friendly, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's just something special about the way glass feels. It's so smooth and what have you. 
And I guess because it breaks, um, it becomes a little more precious. Yeah. You know, a little more valuable. A lot oh, of yeah, people breaks. know that there's a good chance that your uh, <laughs> <Shattered. laughs> ring ain't going to last forever, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's an you amazing light? thing. Yeah, he does that lighter. Oh, ah, okay, well, let's see. Right. You got a lighter, you got a lighter, you got a lighter. Let's do let's this. Let's do this. All let's right. Let's do this. You got the end of It's all good. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Six joints going at once. Well, five <laughs> joints in a row. That's amazing. That's a big hit. That's gonna. That, that's like five people hot box in the room all at the same time. I don't know. I'll take puff on that. <laughs> there we go. That's, that's real. amazing. Real that is amazing. Where'd you get that? Uh, oh, you can buy them raw. Yeah. yeah. Obviously available in the local. Oh, 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 yeah. You guys in on this? <laughs> we know that like, <laughs> deal's <is> not. <laughs> Send it all the way to the back. Let those people at the far end have some. Yeah, we're we're uh, yeah. sharing. We're sharing with the audience today. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Yes, I do. I got the uh, jockeys watching. Says I have a one of her um, her brother in law is a, is a glass blower, and I have one of his marbles. Right. Yeah. Nice. All the marbles are awesome. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, you can get lost in those things. Do some mushrooms and <coughs> have it. Kind of gander into a marble. Wow, that was something else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's coming back, sir. There you go. Oh, yeah. Wow. You sure? Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh yeah, we don't want to be medicated. Oh, man. That, I mean, that's a way to say hi. Oh. Yeah. Hi. hi. Yeah, you bet. Have high a five. Puff, have a puff on that. That's a high five if there ever was one. Uh, and, the, and the dinky goes back to the end of the crowd as well. Yeah, why not? Let's one. go. All right. <coughs> All right, so uh, <coughs> anything else on the horizon for you, uh, Doobie Dan? Or you just uh, keeping on making, up, making music and playing music and yeah, changing the world? We shot three videos, not last weekend, but the weekend before. We got two more that we got ideas for. So I got music videos that are going to be coming out. Singles to release between the time. All sorts of material for my uh, social medias. You can find me at Doobie from SKS on YouTube. Or on Doobie from SKS on Facebook. Doobie on Spotify and on Apple Music. Uh, Apollo 420 is now streaming on all platforms. Beautiful. That's Beautiful. good. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and uh, sharing one of your songs with us. I look forward to seeing you on Cannabis Day. I thank you for, you know, the amazing work that you're doing. I mean, music shapes the world. And, uh, you know, if you're and making music like that, it's powerful. It's got those kind of lyrics and it's talking about our issue here. Can't thank you enough for that, buddy. Thank you. Thanks so much thank you for having me. All the yeah, best. No good luck to you in your career. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Thanks. And, and as I said a little while ago, we've got a surprise guest on the show. I didn't announce it off the top, but I'm really, really pleased to have Pat Warnicky here. Uh, Pat's been a, a warrior for the Cannabis Crusade for a long, long time, uh, with stories in Saskatchewan of all places, um, got raided and arrested and went through a, a constitutional challenge and won. And tell us about that, Mr. Warnicky. Great to see you, guys. Nice to see you guys. Nice, nice to see you. have me. Uh, yeah, we... Uh, we're just waiting on our, our decision for our remedies for our charter challenge. Great. Uh, we won the charter challenge um, on patients access and as well as edibles and for no arbitrary limits on, on, uh, on, on products or edibles. Yeah. Uh, that's so important. For sure. Yeah. It's one of the biggest things lacking right now in the market, obviously. And it's very consistent with the other rulings that have come down recently in the Howell case in Alberta and Absolutely. You know, other ones. You know, the Preston uh, said, uh, Smith's case, uh, yeah. lots of different cases before. So yeah, I think it's, uh, I think with this ruling, I think it helps everybody. I think I hopefully, think so uh, you know, obviously it's um, the, the full publication isn't out yet, so the publication bounds on for, for a bit. But, but it's, it's, allowing, it's allowing you to have plans of opening a store again, right? Yeah, correct. We're actually, uh, I'm actually heading back to, uh, we've been on the island for two and a half years. I'm actually heading to Alberta, going to Edmonton uh, next week. And we're going to be setting up uh, a shop in Edmonton, a few other in Alberta, a few others in Alberta. I see. Uh, some CP land and First Nations shops. And um, as well as Saskatchewan, as soon as uh, our uh, appeal period is done for our decision, uh, we're going to be starting to look at uh, doing Saskatoon and Regina again too. Well, that's and, a hell of a sacrifice, leaving Vancouver Island to go back to the first. I know. Right? I know. And, and how long is the appeal period? 30 days? 30 days. 30 days. Just so the people would not crazy. And do they, they, they anticipate an appeal at all? Uh, I don't think so. I think, um, I think uh, we kind of cleaned the floor with them pretty good. 
And I think that the last uh, arguments uh, last month, uh, they didn't have much for an argument for our remedies. Um, right. And um, yeah, I don't think it's I don't think they're going to challenge for an appeal. Uh, from right. the sounds of it, um, yeah, from the off the record conversation I went on with my lawyer and the crown doesn't sound like it. But you know, obviously, uh, I don't want them to be sore losers or something. So I just need to uh, just give that thirty days type thing for sure. Well, really good for you for hanging in there and, and making that happen and not just accepting those charges and, and whatever penalties they wanted to give you. Uh, I know it's not easy. It, it's very time consuming. It's expensive. It's mm -hmm. stressful. Mm -hmm, uh, sure. So uh, thank you so much for uh, for being there and doing that for yeah, us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the whole community. It, it certainly is going to help us with what we're looking for here with the cannabis substitution I program so. and the healing wave. Uh, it's going to help a lot of people. You know, it's going to provide eventually the proper <coughs> access for people. And, yeah, that's, <coughs> that's what we need. Well, actually, oh. maybe something I should tell everybody. I haven't actually told you guys yet. Um, but we're looking at taking it one step further, actually, for our, our court case. Right. Um, because they charge me with the CBD charges, um, they, they owe me a remedy. They owe me um, some kind of explanation for it. So I think we have an opportunity to challenge the government's current regulations on the uh, industrial hemp uh, regulations. I see. And we reclassify it as cannabis because, I mean, you have hexocannabidiol or hexocannabidiol. Dial? Is it hexocannabidiol? Uh, I, 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 I almost had it mastered. I was going to say it as well. It's one of the best cancer Hexa, training. Hexocannabitrial. That's what it is. That's it. Hexocannabitrial. Um, it, it exists in CBD. It exists in, in cannabis as well as other terpenes, obviously. So we want to take it from a, a industrial usage where it's only used for hemp and fiber. But the cannabinoid you just mentioned is one of three that we've identified that <laughs> are extremely helpful in dealing with cancer patients. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you imagine how much is available in these huge crops that they're basically throwing down the drain for the for the medical capabilities. And I think if we challenge that um, and we prove that it's obviously needed medically, and there's no reason there's no reason at all to restrict it as it wasn't ever uh, you know uh, it's not euphoric. No, no, it's not. I'm not addicted. Um, so I mean, there was no reason for it in the first place. And when we questioned the government about that, when we questioned Health Canada, we didn't have a good answer when we asked that. Right. So I think we're going to take it one step further, and I think if we do that, we can get it. Uh, 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 rescheduled I guess if you will um, I think that it'll open it up and it'll make it probably cheaper for people as well as more accessible and, and it's um, going to make a bunch of hemp farmers welcome. very happy so yeah. that's part of it and that's kind of why I'm saying it here today too is if anybody knows any hemp farmers out there I made a, a, a Facebook page about it but at the end of the day I have nothing personally to gain from this I have nothing to do with the hemp industry I have nothing personally to gain from it uh, but so I don't want to be forking the whole bill for the lawyer fees for myself. Right. So I started up this Facebook group, and if anybody knows any anyone any hemp farmers, uh, anybody in the industry for hemp farming, I'm I'm just trying to get a, a, a pool of people together, and if everybody contributes a little bit, uh, we can get the lawyers onto it, and we can uh, you know, take this fight to them. Do you know Roger Snow? I don't know. Roger Snow is the originator of the uh, the. Um... The machine that takes the shells off of the hemp seeds that allowed for hemp heart sales. Cool. Uh, a huge hemp farmer in Alberta. Uh, I know him personally. We interviewed him for our movie, uh, Still Trippin', the Trans Canada Highway. Uh, I'll send a message to Roger. And, uh, you know, and he's probably more than happy to help. He's, a, he's an activist and for sure himself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's great. Great, great. Thank you, <coughs> thank you so much. And now they're going to have to worry about a bunch of people. Uh, Ravaging the hemp fields to get some CBD. <laughs> well, they could just grow their own, right? <laughs> it used to be that they'd say, uh, you know, these teenagers are gonna they're gonna find these hemp fields. We're not gonna put them on the main highway. Nobody gets to see where they but are. Hemp doesn't get you but, high. Uh, but hemp won't get you high. But it'll just give you a headache. They say. Yes, you know, yes. You'll smoke it trying to get high, and you get a headache. Yeah. No, you'll smoke it trying to get high, and you'll be getting some CBDs. Yeah. You know, and some hexatriol or hexa. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I haven't asked it yet. I have to be at betrayal, sure, yes. Sure. Rick should be here. He knows exactly how to say that. <laughs> He's all over that. He sends me this great stuff all the time. Um, you know, Bricks uh, works for us here at the CSP. Uh, Bricks Carlisle, one of the longest surviving chemo uh, patients, in, not one of, the longest surviving chemo patient in Canada. Um, several years ago, um, he was going to die. He was in terrible shape. He yep. was in a wheelchair. He was close to 300 pounds. And uh, and he took control of his own uh, health with, with changing his diet, with following Wim Hof and other people who had you know, survival techniques of breathing and, and uh, cold diving and other things. And uh, it's just amazing the transformation in that man's life. But he's a, he's a very healthy individual at this point. I'm super happy to have him around me, uh, to advise me and to, uh, to give me this information. And he's the first one. 
that brought that to that story to me yep. about these three cannabinoids that they had identified within the hemp plants and just kids like leaving them alone. <laughs> you know, you know uh, some of these earbuds that came in. Waterfalls and okay. forests. And waterfalls and We're back. And, and hikes and caves. And, and sunsets. Yeah. You know, it's and, beautiful. Yeah, surfing if you go to the other side. And, yeah. And so there's someone from Saskatchewan that, you know, yeah. in, in May, we go from minus 30 to plus 30. Yeah. I know it's uh, a little bit, uh, it's, a, it's a paradise out there. No bugs. You know, we're going to be going back with a bunch right. of bugs and plus 30 or, well, Easily plus 30, probably plus 40s. For, for, oh, yeah. So we're not going to Winnipeg. Well, no, okay. hey, I've been up in Saskatchewan. Yeah, Saskatchewan is just bad. Mosquitoes there come out at lunchtime. You guys have birds in Saskatchewan? <laughs> of course you do. I've seen the big flocks of birds as I've gone oh, yeah, through there. Big, big waterfowl. But somebody commented the other day that uh, I guess it was Mary in, uh, in Winnipeg. That, yeah. that there's, she doesn't hear birds there. There's not a lot of birds in Winnipeg. Really, eh? And that struck me as being probably why there's so many big ass mosquitoes in Winnipeg. Yeah, maybe. That makes sense, right? Yeah, well, yeah. They, they come from Ontario, those mosquitoes. I oh, think. do they? Yeah, probably. Yeah, they don't come all the way here because of the weather. Oh, you're talking mosquitoes now. Mosquitoes, oh. yeah. I don't know how many people start coming from Ontario and stop in the prairies and stay there. No, not too many. I don't think. Many, it's too flat, yeah. Well, Ontario's kind of nice, too. You know, they, they, got, they got a lot of lakes there. They got a lot of beautiful forests there, yeah. as well, especially up in northern Ontario. You know, Canada is by far... The, the possessor of more natural freshwater lakes than any other country in yeah, the world. Yeah, by far, yeah. By yeah, far. By far, yeah. And we've got Lake Superior, which is the largest lake in the world. It's the largest uh, lake whole Hora, water which lake. is the third, third largest lake in the world. Look at Manitoba, has got over 10,000 lakes itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Canada's an amazing place, for sure. Too bad the government cast is so yeah. corrupt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And here's your opportunity, government. Stop being corrupt. We'll help you. We'll help you get elected next year because you're going to, uh, coming up because you'll do the right thing. You will get elected. You keep doing the wrong thing and we'll just change governments every time. Well, I don't well, think that. Until we get it right. Make it through this year. Look what's happened since legalization. I mean, they, they essentially took the whole, they made up a whole industry without inviting the experts to the table. Yeah. That doesn't happen in oil. It doesn't happen in anywhere. When you go to a new area and industry is coming in, you always contact and you always get uh, consultations with the experts in the area. Well, they had consultations with the pot community. I remember. Well, but they didn't do anything about it, though. But, but what we felt, I mean, Greg Williams was front, front foremost on that. Rest in peace, Greg. I miss your brother. I love you so much as we're having another big protest coming up and you're not going to be there. It doesn't feel right. But, uh, yeah, Greg was all over that. that uh, but about? they already had their own plan in place. They, they didn't follow anything anyone said to them. Well, they did the opposite. Exactly. And that's, and that's what Greg noticed right away. So we pointed out all of these things to them, which were key for legalization. And if you look at it, they pretty much went the opposite direction on all of the key points that Absolutely. we made. So they came and consulted to find out what we thought was right so mm -hmm. they could do the opposite. Absolutely. And, but I'm just saying, like, another board, another table, another the tables, they didn't invite the experts. They had a couple consultations, but at the end of the day, none of the decision makers, none of the actual panels were of the industry. And I mean, yeah. I was a part of the AFN Cannabis Consortium too. And I mean, they got their talents in there with the AFN. So right away we saw, you know, um, unfortunately some puppet groups that were in there yeah. and they, they tried to steer it one way. And there's still and, a big divide during that, in that community absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And, um, you know, when, when we first were on the Cannabis Consortium, there was two of us that were asking relevant questions about the industry. And on day, after day two, they uninvited us and told us to leave. Wow. And uh, we figured out who the individual was that's working with the liberals and it's, um, the whole community knows who it is, so I don't know Well, because they had their agenda. They had Absolutely. it figured out. But that's what they that's what they wanted, is they just wanted to control it and have it from the start. So at the end of the day, they wanted the appearance that, that, that there was some choice, that there was some consultations, or there was some decision-making on behalf of the communities. But at the end of the day, nothing happened for, yeah. for, for as far as the communities are, are, are involved, right? Yeah, I mean, well, I know they had their agenda. They, they paid attention to what we were saying because, you know, we were really gathering a lot of public support across Canada. We had huge rallies. We had Justin Trudeau's picture up in the art gallery there on a pack of zigzags. And, yeah. You know, vote yeah. for Justin. He's going to legalize weed. Yeah. Wow. He screwed all of us. He screwed all of us. Yeah. And, and, so, and what they had put together was a plan that would allow for all the mechanisms of prohibition to remain intact. So all those people, you know, government insiders, people who are making money off the prohibition laws, they weren't going to be out of work with legalization. No, no. Uh, there was going to be two different types. There was going to be legal cannabis and still illegal cannabis. And all the people involved in the illegal cannabis were still going to be criminals with enforce, uh, in, increased enforcement, increased penalties, a whole bunch more laws to, to govern those people. 
And, and this is the so-called legalization from the Trudeau cartel, and that's why we call it so-called legalization, because yeah. it's not what we've been fighting for. Speaking of which, I actually have a story about that. This is something I can actually say, because it's not under by a gag order. Um, but uh, in 2017, uh, in my office came uh, an ex-member of, uh, of the Liberal Party uh, who served under uh, Trudeau, under uh, Greg Ashley. And he came into my office... And he threw out a proposition and said, eh, we had a good talk, went to the doc, showed him what was going on. And he said, for 250 k I can guarantee you get your license and this and that. Yeah. So I tried to corner him, and I went out, and I, and my, my, and my, I had other people from my office here, and I was like, holy shit. So I went out and I got a recorder, a voice recorder, the next, or the next day at Staples, and I told him, I said, I don't have the money, but I might have it tomorrow. So, you know, I, and I did investigative work before I had a PI license and stuff, of course. So I tried to fuck it. Place this thing, and I did it. And he's been down this road before. He came to my office, and he said... Let's go outside and chat. <laughs> so there's only the three of us that witnessed it that know about it, but uh, I don't care. I'm saying it publicly. He tried to sue me all he wants, whatever else. I was there. It happened. So um, the fact of the matter is that's that's what was happening before legalization. Right. So how many other, I mean. And how many guys have made that offer? Exactly. And Ashley's from our area, right? So, I mean, so he felt comfortable. So how many guys in different areas were doing this for, yeah. for, for politicians and so on, yeah. right? So <laughs> Putting together the cartel. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's a there's a pay to play, you know, if you're going to join a cartel for sure. Yeah. And uh, we 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 saw that happening. The, the, the people that were getting the licenses, you know, were, were connected inside, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, and so many other people that really had valid uh, applications in, you know, didn't have a chance really. No. But I mean, you, even not just from the, uh, the 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 store side, but back in 2013, we were we were in number 40 in, in line to get uh, for LP licenses. And we, we, we kept on getting put on the shelf. We're, we didn't understand what was going on. So we did all the freedom, uh, the FOI access stuff. And uh, we got all the, all the details of what was going on. And it was evident because uh, you could find out exactly what order, or, or organogram or canopy. You could find out like these guys were in 280 or 186 or whatever else. And these guys were getting licenses like that. But I knew the guy was in number 5. I knew the guy was number 16. I had us at number 40. None of us ever got through, no matter what we did. That's right. So I mean, it, it, right from the start, from the from the growers, uh, from the growing uh, program in uh, 2000, uh, 2013, and in fact, it was actually well, I can't think of the court case there, right? So, anyways, it, it was part of the court case, uh, even that fact that, that what was happening. But yeah, you know, I had somebody here the other day that was talking about uh, you know the monopoly and how it was all set up and the rest of it and how corrupt it all is. Um, you know, we we thought we had rules here in Canada about anti-monopoly. We thought we had <laughs> rules here in Canada about protection rackets and this person said well why why isn't this enforced in the courts I said, because the courts all work for the government right. you know yeah. and he said, what we need is some good lawyers and i said well that's what you don't get is a good lawyer because yeah. almost all the lawyers they have to sell their soul to be lawyers and they have to you know swear an oath to they the play bar the game. they play the game and then they all play the game and they're not about to rock the boats so. nope that's it and then we've been watching that for a long time so we got to do it ourselves i mean that's what you know and and, and and all due respect uh uh, Paul Lewin, I think, is a good lawyer, and, and, and certainly Jack Lloyd has been, you know, really good with us, and I think he's a good human being that's a lawyer. Yeah, that's what's uh, But, you know, they are, their hands are tied quite a bit. By and I want to say a show for Mark Berg, too. He always, uh, he doesn't get mentioned enough for yeah, cannabis. That's, good that's my lawyer from Saskatchewan. He's helped a couple guys Perfect. out, and he's done a great job, so I just want to throw him out there, so if anyone in the prairies needs somebody, too. I mean, Jack's great, of course, and yeah. Paul's great, and, you know, and... You know, all these guys are great, but, uh, you know, just, uh, I, I have to give it to Mark, just to uh, drop that for him. And some of the good lawyers in the past sure made a lot of money off this whole thing. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I won't mention any names. But, yeah, well, yeah, there's a certain lawyer that we're both thinking of. And, yeah, you know, and when, one, when one of my raids happened after paying the insurance fees that were due, that, that program we had, they didn't come to order to come to bat for us. So yeah. we were more than a little upset, and I called them out publicly for it. So it is what it is. Yeah, and there's been some selling out, and uh, yeah. you know, I won't go into it. I don't think yeah. it's, it's right to do that. But, uh, yeah, we have not been really treated all that well by some of the more prominent lawyers that have made a whole lot of money. Uh, one in particular, but there's a couple of three. Four, that's why the ones you mentioned stuff, they have to be, you know, people have to know about them. People have yeah, to that's understand why I mentioned these guys that. are that good. And, and, and like you're saying, it's a game, it's a corporate game. Whenever you have these big these big uh, um, lawyer firms, you know, they're all buddy buddies. It's kind of like a union almost, right? And they won't rock the boat and they won't do anything uh, special where, you know, Jack and Paul and Mark, you know, they, they kind of went on a limb and they didn't care about the, the inter uh, industry game that was going on and they uh, just did what they, what they needed to do. And I can tell you from being a far part of a few court cases before, I've, I've been on the other side with the, the real corporate guys, and it's, it's not a very good, it's not a very fun thing. So, no. um, having guys that are independent stick their neck out like that, uh, it's more than 
Yeah. More than appreciated. Yeah, I'm very grateful for, for Jack, right. for sure, and those other lawyers that have uh, done good work, you know, trying to do the right thing. But they're few and far between, it seems. Yes. And, and the courts are really in their pockets. But, you know, we've managed to win most of the court cases that we brought to, you know, to the Supreme Court in constitutional challenges. But that's because they got nothing, and, and we got it all. Like, this is a plant that doesn't kill people, that's been used medicinally for thousands of years. There's, you know, science behind it all over the place now. They have no leg to stand on. They don't have anything. When, when you challenge the government on, you know, why CBD was illegal, you said they didn't really have much, because yeah, they don't. Yeah, there yeah, isn't yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. You know, how, how can you justify prohibiting a medical person from accessing a natural herb that has all of these amazing medical properties and none of the, the bad side effects that even the pharmaceuticals have, you know? 100%. How do you, how do you justify that? They really can't. Well, you know, I they throw a lot of money at it. Absolutely. They, they, they have all these high-powered, high-paid lawyers paid for by taxpayers. I was disgusted to see when uh, we, we took the city of Vancouver, or not we, I wasn't part of it, but the city of Vancouver was taken to court over you know, whether or not they had the right to close down these cannabis shops because it was a federal thing. There was six lawyers there paid for by taxpayers on the other side fighting against yeah. whatever it was yeah. that, that we were trying to say they should be doing. Yeah. Uh, we went up against those kind of odds and the odds of multi-billion dollar corporations since you know since our fight started here that's why it's taken so long i guess that's why it's now 2023 and we still don't have proper access and reasonable access even though the courts have said that that's what we need to have time after time after time yeah yeah, yeah they try to absorb have every everybody absorbed into the recreational from the medical obviously and yeah. you know it wasn't going that way and even even worse and, and something i just heard just today i just came back from uh out east a little bit for uh, checking out growers and talking to guys and both sides of the of, of the fence and it seems like a lot of these LPs are really uh, backdooring a lot of the industry right now. They're selling a lot of other stuff in the back door. It's always been going on. So I mean, it's always been going on. But I heard I, I heard from a pretty reputable person. I guess so. But so the regulations for setting up uh, a grill and stuff, the health kind of says they're watching the counters and stuff. And I heard from somebody today very well uh, that knows very well. Um, they don't watch any of those videos or anything anymore. So the back door shit's happening nonstop. So the, the fact of the matter is. Is it's how they're staying alive, actually. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and we see just, just say Fire Flower closed down, and the other ones. The fact of the matter is that they're all going to close down. People can't afford the exorbitant prices and, and, and lack of quality um, for these things for, for tax purposes. People need to get what they need to get with the economy being the way it is right now, and, and people seeing through what it is. And the fact that it's all coming back door, anyways, from, from these LPs into the black market. The reality is, just like you said, it's a cartel. Yeah, they, 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 they're, they're trying to wipe out. Uh, you know, uh, basically gentrified the industry of, of the, the industry the OGs that have been around forever, the legacy industry, and, and replace them with these corporate guys, and they're doing the same shit. They're coming out the back door and selling it to the market. So the reality well, I mean, there's, is, there's, a, there's the a, I mean, you, you've had a story. You understand that there's some people that want to pay the high price. Yeah. You know, they they want to have the highest price. They want to brag to their friends. They want to feel like they've got the best, and they're willing to to spend that money. And there is definitely a niche for that. I mean, there's a good wow. business to be made for people who want to have high price cannabis stores for sure. And, and if they want to have wreck stores instead of medical stores, you can have stores where you can get wrecked. Yeah. You know, if that's all you're looking for is to get wrecked, <laughs> yeah. then, you know, you can go, you should have a store to go to where you can do that. But to not allow for the medical access, you know, just, and, and allow people to go and get wrecked. Like, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. You know, I mean, we thought we had protections yeah, against these things in government, but we don't. And that's what we've really learned in the last little while is that we don't really have protections at all no. from these sorts of things. And what I've learned in the last couple of years here, and through BRICS a lot as well, is that there's no protections for disabled people here. No. You know, in Canada, we don't have a disabled rights uh, uh, document or anything like that. And really what these restrictions are is a direct attack on disabled people. Yeah, yeah, for you know, sure. Poor, disabled people, sick people, um, they're the ones who are, are really under attack by this government who are actively out there trying to restrict their access, making sure they close shit down. Rosie was uh, setting up at uh, Thornton Park there on Saturdays and Wednesdays and a couple other days, whatever, whatever days she was, and she doesn't do that anymore because the harassment got up considerably yeah. and they got, they got uh, e-bikes. Uh, so the cops would zip in on their e-scooters and their e-bikes uh, quickly yeah. and be able to get up on her before she could get her stuff put away and stuff like that. Wow. So, uh, you know, they're really working hard to, to maintain the cartel's monopoly and, and exclude those people that can't afford those prices and need to have the medical side of things. They need to have high dose edibles. So that's why I'm so happy with the, with the fact that you pursued that through your constitutional challenge. 
Um, you got to you know, direct a decision about the high dose edibles and the need for those. Uh, you also in that decision got to, uh, direct comments from the judge about the need for walk-in storefronts and, and that's access. so powerful yeah. as well. Uh, face-to-face -face access. So just like everybody else has a store they can go to buy their liquor yeah, or exactly. whatever. Well, a, bar, a bar is a safe consumption site for alcohol. Yeah, I mean, and that's not even on the table. Yeah. You know, we haven't even got to the point where we can fight for that yet. We're still trying to fight for some reasonable access for Absolutely. medical people. But the average person needs a consumption site. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cannabis is such a social, social substance. Yeah. You know, people use it to commune with each other. That's why it's called recreational, because you recreate yourself. And that's all part of getting together with a group, sharing some doobies, yeah. sharing your stories, sharing your insights. All of that is a big, important part of the social aspect of cannabis. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're not allowing. Yeah, that's sharing of information. I think that's what they're afraid of, right? That is what they're you afraid know, of. Other than a, a one block in Vancouver that's kind of accepted, they need to be able to make uh, this access happen across and the And it's country. not really accepted. They're fighting their ass to, to try to stay I, alive. I, I, I know. Yeah, they're I, under I, direct I, threat. I wasn't sure. That's why Jody is not able to come and speak at our rallies because she's oh, yeah. under direct threat from the government at this point. And, oh, and, and they're wanting to do things right. They're wanting to be legal. Of course they are. Like everybody well, else would love to be. Do that. You know, but we need, we need more people to start organizing, stepping forward. Yeah. So you're forming uh, communities, forming you know collectives or uh, you know medical uh, uh, groups uh, across Canada, yeah. and, and rent out a, a small warehouse space, cheap. Decorate yourself. Everybody bring a couch, whatever you got to do, extra TV. People got we we got to start getting together as a community. We have to start doing these things and pushing the issue and challenging it. At the end of the day, challenge it. And you, you saw know? how many people came out to support the 420, even in the pouring rain, at two separate events. Actually, there was three or four events that day in the city. Yeah, lots of vendors available. Lots of people wanting to still be part of it that aren't part of it. So we just need these people to, to keep stepping up and keep coming out. Uh, Cannabis Day is coming up. We need to have a whole bunch of vendors there that are willing to stand with the rest of us and you know and stare down the authorities, which we will do. We will succeed. You won't lose your stuff. No, and every time one of these uh, decisions goes through, you know, Ted's got his injunction filed right now. Yep. He's getting a, what, what's it called, a uh, oh, judicial review. Uh, he's wait, well, waiting upon that now. That's kind of the final step that he can do, though, isn't it? A judicial review. Um, He's kind of lost at the other levels of that particular fight. Um, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. No, I'm not, not familiar too much with where no, he's at. With there, that. There's not, but um, I think he has a general better chance of judicial review than uh, than, than actually dealing with health Canada. Tell you the truth. So, well, make because, sure he has access to your documents. Well, you know, yeah, yeah, we've talked to him, uh, <laughs> yeah, quite a bit over the last little while. I mean, with all he's got his shit together. So I mean, with Good. everything uh, you know going on, I think that the judicial review, I think, will be positive. Uh, I don't think there was any Makes path sense. with Health Canada. I don't think that they, they saw their interest, they saw their mechanism. And just like you had before, just like we had in Saskatchewan, we dealt with them too before. Um, they just, they're, they're, they're reason, oh, it does not, you don't have a DIN number or whatever else, they'll make up something. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's not that's not what they want. They, they need to be told by a judge. That's how the path has been since yeah. the beginning. And so well, that's when they get told by a judge, they really don't comply properly. No, but then they, they, they never have. They never have. I mean, they just hope we go away, but we don't. And as yeah. long as we don't go away, that's we right. keep on coming back, that's and right. we keep on fighting, and we keep on taking, like, Ted is to a judicial review, or like you're doing, uh, we, we, we need to have that. We need to keep on having those fights and pushing the limits, because they're not going to give us anything we want. We, need, we always need a judge to tell these assholes that, uh, you know, it's time to do something. Yeah, because our agenda is kind of different from theirs. Yeah, absolutely. Theirs is exploit the industry, make as much money as they can, and keep those people criminals. Ours is and give us so freedom, like, give us access. And they don't want to accept it as medical period. That's the biggest thing. Well, what kind of trouble might they be in if they did that? You know? I mean, I think that's probably the bottom line to all of that is they're really afraid that if they admit that it's got medical value, that they get the same stats going on in Health Canada that they got down in the United States federal government. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's, it's a Schedule One drug, it has no medicinal value. Because if it did, and Daryl Plekis, I, I brought this up a few times on the show, uh, Daryl Plekis, who was the spokesperson for law enforcement at Fraser Valley uh, University there, um, he, he said in a debate with Norm Stamper when that was brought up, I mean, well, what about the medical value of cannabis? And this was back in 2004, I believe. And he said, oh, well, hang on now. He said the jury's still out as to whether or not there's any medical value. But he admitted there, he said, if it does turn out that it has medical value, then, you know, then it's a whole different ballgame. We yeah. sure shouldn't be using the criminal law to prosecute people yeah. who are simply trying to derive a medical value. And hell yeah, but here we are, yeah, these years later, you know, it's 19 yeah. years later. I think that's well established now yeah. that there's medical value on all sorts of different levels with cannabis. And yet uh, here they are still deciding they can use the criminal law against people that don't use their cannabis. You know? yeah. Because... 
because the other cannabis is dangerous. Now, how, how much sense does that make? Mm-hmm. So you, they, the Cannabis Act is all about keeping people into the regulated supply and deterring illegal activity because the regulated supply is safe for people. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to use the, the cannabis that they deem to be maybe not safe for you, well, now they're going to hurt you for it. Right? Like, give me a break. Exactly. You're going to do more damage to you than the cannabis ever could, even if it was harmful. How does that make any sense? It's never made any sense. It's always just made money. Right? Yeah. It's all about money. And that's that's what's corrupt. You can't have money and profit as your motive for doing things when in the wake of what you're doing is leaving victims and bodies, you know? And that's exactly what they're doing. My defense is, is that I'm a human being with knowledge that can keep somebody alive that is currently on the path to death. We have a public health emergency of people dying, and because of my experience, I know I can help this person get out, get out of that risk that risk category by transitioning onto edibles instead of that. Yes. So I felt, as a human being, during a public health emergency, I had a responsibility. It's more than a responsibility. You have to... You have to. It's against the law to, to walk by somebody who's dying Absolutely. and not help Absolutely. them if you can. Absolutely. Right? So the I have no choice. The Samaritan's law, yeah. It, it yeah. We, 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 were, we, were, we were trying to bring that up as an argument in fact and forth. Well, we will be. Good. good yeah, we good. will be. Good. It's, uh, you know, it, it's just so criminally wrong here. It is murder. I keep saying it. I hate to say it. And, and the reason I hate to say it is because it probably affects you know how we're going to be treated by Health Canada is that I'm here bashing them. And, you know, the, the previous lawyer, who I don't mention anymore, told me that, you know, if you're going to get something favorable from Health Canada, you can't be bashing them. Cool. And I should just stop doing that. And so I can't stop doing that, because what they're doing is so wrong. I, I'm not going to bend over and say, okay, there you go, stuff it up there. And the judges are basically backing what we're saying, that they're not doing what's right. Like, like, yeah. I, I think that's a fair argument. I mean, if you're not doing what's right, and you keep on losing these court cases because nothing's happening, then you're basically an asshole. Yeah. When is it going to be enough already? When is, it, when is a judge going to finally do something that will actually mean that they have to do something? Because it seems like they just say they, they need to do things, and then they do something that isn't really what they need to do. In fact, you look back on it, nothing really changes, and yet here we are, still you know, back in court with yeah. them again. So at some point, you would hope that a judge really has the power to do something. I mean, I think they should all be arrested. I yeah. think the whole yeah, PM's absolutely. office and the whole justice ministry should be arrested, all of them. Uh, they're complicit in murder. But Cross our fingers for the judicial good. review. Hopefully, yeah, that sure. comes out good too. You know, yeah. how well, many years will that take, though? Um, yeah, well, but yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the problem. Five years, years take so long for my renewal. Sure. I still have to have my renewal. I still and you're four years in five right? years. Five years. Five years five, how yeah. long were you from the time that they came and raided your store until you finally got it? And you still don't finally quite have it. Oh, uh, we're no, we're over five years now. Oh, so, so there's two things like that. We're over five years as of March 31st. First of all. Right. Uh, we're still in, in, the, in the decision phase, and this is just of the challenge. Right. So hypothetically, if everything went wrong with my decision, I would still be facing my charges still, right. and have to actually go through my jury trial and right. my whole trial. I'm already five years in still, and maybe right. years down the road, yeah. and it still might be a couple of years down the road before. It well, be I, I still have to get my property back, right? I still got to get reinstated for for passport stuff yeah. and all the rest of that. I still have conditions and gag orders drop. When, so, when the uh, Victoria Buyers Club uh, put their constitutional challenge forward for edibles, uh, it was eight years from yeah. the time that they actually Crazy. started that until it actually got to the point wow. where the courts had said, eight yes, years. people have a constitutional right to be able to produce their own edibles and to, yeah. you know, all the rest of that. I don't know uh-huh. that was with the... That was your fight. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. Such a, such an intense yeah, it's supposed to be health care. Long term yeah. war that we're in here. I I'm getting old as we speak. <laughs> I, I, I thought I'd be retired by now. I thought that uh, you know when I when I read The Emperor Wears No Clothes, I mean for years I I'd really had a very good sense about what Dana Larson was saying as the editor of Cannabis Culture magazine. He brought me to tears several times. I really had a pretty good sense about how wrong it was already, but I really didn't know the, the bulk of it. And then I read The Emperor Wears No Clothes, and then it was like, oh my God, oh my God. Here it is all laid out, you know, in several different chapters, all the different aspects of it, all the, all the notes in the back, it's so clear. And I made the comment, well, armed with this, it can't be more than another 10 years before we have proper, reasonable access. <laughs> and somebody said to me when I said that, that, you know, that's what Jack Herrera said when he wrote the book over 30 years ago. It can't be more than 10 years. 
and I made that comment in 2004. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so 19 years, years, and here we are. Uh, maybe next year. You know, maybe our our constitutional challenge coming up in October, and November. Maybe by the end of the following year, we'll have a judgment that you know, who knows. knows. But you know, 20 years after I said it should only take 10, and it shouldn't take 10. It should have been the day. It should yeah, have been 10 years before, 20, 30 years before that. It should never have happened. Yeah. There was never any justification for any of this, you know? No. William Randolph Hearst lying in his newspaper articles about people smoking a reefer before they chopped their parents up and stuff like that. Just to, just to demonize cannabis so that he could protect <laughs> his financial and tree interests. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, there, was, there was never any justification. We hire public servants. We are supposed to be electing good people, the best people, to run the show for us. They're supposed to be running it for us. They're supposed to do their due diligence in all these matters, and obviously they're not doing due diligence at all. They well, probably, get a, they probably get a file handed yeah. to them when they get elected that tells them, lays out for them what they can and cannot do, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. But from the top down, I mean, are, are right. qualifications for federal employees or any employees really with the government... From the top down, it starts at the top, the PM. I've said uh, that, I've said that all the way through. This corruption runs to the highest levels of government in Canada. And Lisa Lapointe, the chief coroner in British Columbia, made that comment addressing the municipalities of British Columbia. She said, organized crime has infiltrated the highest levels of the Canadian government. And that's why we're not solving this opioid crisis. It is. It is. It is. I mean, you look, at, look, look at what happened last year. Uh, when the Vancouver police did that investigation of where all the money was going missing downtown, yeah. right? So, and the reason that happened, and I was talking to a friend of mine, the VPD, um, you know, the, the brass was pissed off because they were getting the shit out of the stick. They were getting the, the, the finger Blame pointed at them, right? And then they had guys not doing their job or doing jobs that shouldn't be under their responsibility. So getting shit on, I guess they had enough getting shit on. And they decided to put their own investigation in. Well, that wasn't sanctioned by the city. It wasn't sanctioned by the government. So then there was a pissing match. Although... They came down to the fucking answer and got the answer that well, shit was missing. It's not right. They got shit on it and the story went nowhere. That's how you know corruption's so fucking bad. So when bad. the police actually uncover absolute fraud, absolute from top to bottom fraud, and they get shit and start told to stay in their own lane by the by the government, and then you don't hear nothing again about the story. So many damning reports to do with people that were involved in that whole thing, and nobody's head rolled. Exactly. Nobody, nobody got charged with anything. Bro. That actually, that should be a royal commission on that. Like, absolutely, there should be a, a big inquiry into this whole campaign. There should be a royal, there should be a royal commission on that incident alone. Yeah. How many years? How many billions of dollars? They said there was four billion dollars missing in that one year alone. Yeah, so you think that over the course of how many years? If you let's say let's say it's four billion a year for the last twenty years, what the fuck could that have done for this neighborhood? Eight well, I'll tell you what it did do. Lot. It was enough to grease the grease the skids and allow all this to happen and bribe all the people that need to be bribed and pay yeah. off or get rid of anybody that's in you know the opposition. That's a lot of money, and that money has a lot of power. And those people don't want to lose what they got going on. And, and, and then how shame on the police too. Shame on the police for, for dropping at that. There should have been someone that had, look, look at CSIS right now. CSIS has one rogue person that actually gives us a little of the fact of what's going on. But mm-hmm. you think one person with the VPD would be like. You know what? We need to take this case further. We found an absolute fraud of four billion dollars. Meanwhile, we're charging some of these people for stealing hairspray, stealing listerine, stealing small fucking things to figure out how. Selling cannabis. Yeah, <laughs> selling cannabis. The smallest things that are, you know, I, I, I used to be a loss prevention officer, so I dealt with it a lot. The fact of the matter is, is they're going after these people and putting them in jail and, and arresting them for theft of small, minuscule amounts, which they're in the situation because. If these guys at the top would have been as corrupt, they might have been in health, they wouldn't be stealing something so small in the fucking first place. So it should be investigated. It should be checked out. 100%. And if you have how many officers you have in that VPD, and the fact that none of them have done anything about it, is sad as shit. Sad as shit. Yeah. Shame on the police. Uh, Absolutely. Worldwide. Shame on governments worldwide. On, on the medical profession worldwide. Uh, all these people need to be uh, you know, reassessed and taken to task and put uh, curtails on them for what they can and cannot do. If, if, the top, but, if the top politicians had any clout, anything, they would they would see this and want to come to the, the bottom of this, and they would be asking and, and, and applying for a royal commission. This, this is worthy of a royal commission. Absolutely. And, and the fact that nobody's even mentioned it, nobody's taking it any further from the police, from the politicians, from anybody, tells you all you need to know. Yeah, self-interest. They all yeah. have their own self-interest in mind, and uh, they're making money off of the whole situation. And, or, they're, or maybe they're going to be, uh, you know, maybe they're going to be ruined. Maybe they're threatened. Maybe they understand, you know, who they're up against and what it all means. 
lots of people have lost their careers, uh, and, and uh, worse, who have yeah. stood up and, and Oh, I don't talk about the shit that we went through. This is why my conditions are dropped. We'll be talking about the shit that we went through and the harassment that we went through. I want you to come on the show and tell me about that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anything else that uh, you can tell us about before we uh, wrap it up? Um, yeah, please. Um, actually, um, anyone out there, we just heard uh, last week we're doing a pilot project in Manitoba um, for addictions. We're helping some people that need help that want to get help. Um, we're doing a pilot project uh, with Sepatoyak First Nation. And uh, and uh, um, if you need to get a hold of the guy, the guy's name is Baba Dylan, or you can get a hold of me, and we'll get you in touch. We, uh, unfortunately, we can only take in so many people this time for the first uh, um, pilot project. Uh, so we want to see who we can help, who, who, who uh, we have to have interviews and see who we can help the most. And, you know, there's certain criteria and stuff that we have to follow. <coughs> um, but it's basically a retreat to go to northern Manitoba. And we're going to have a bunch of different medicine people out there. Beautiful. And a bunch of uh, people teaching tools from, you know, meditation to cold water therapy to breath work to all kinds of things to deal with uh, ADHD, you know, uh, all, all the things that cause depression, anxiety, and mental health things. And give people the tools to deal with these things in the moment. Nice. Um, so Very we're putting nice. on that project if, and if this project goes well, obviously it's going to go a little further than that. So, um, um yeah, yeah, Sepatoyak, yeah, and, uh, they're doing a good job over there. And Bob has been on it for quite a while, so look forward and to how it. can people follow what you're doing and what's happening with your case and stuff? Um, yeah, we've had, not been able to say too much about it, but, uh, you can go on to Canadian Cannabis Charter Challenge Group, on, uh, check us out there, go on to the Best Bud Society. And uh, we, uh, Best Bud Society, our Facebook group, we, we tell everybody what's going on as it happens. And uh, yeah, after July 10th, that's our decision date, uh, 7 10, go figure. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, 7 10 is <laughs> our decision day. Uh, when that happens, we'll do that on purpose. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll let everybody know what's going on at that point in time. And uh, yeah, we'll hopefully, hopefully everybody follows us. And like I said, the hemp issue, uh, if anybody knows any hemp foreign farmers that want to get in contact with us, because I think we have, uh, uh, as Bricks actually helped me out with this, and he pointed out, we have a, we have a, a further fight that we can take it to here. I've talked to a few people, so yeah. Uh, anybody, it's time to get involved if you can and uh, help out if you can, and, and I appreciate it. Very cool, very cool. Thank you so much for dropping by and telling us what you told us. Thank uh, you. I love the work that you me. do, and uh, look forward. Thank to you for uh, your work, my man. I, you got a, you got a, you got a big big uh, big case coming on here. That's, I think I make a lot of change too, and I think uh, I wish you all the best for that. And. I hope it's uh, everything goes well, and I'll be in, I'll be in your corner the whole time, man. We're a good team. We're a good team. Thank you so much for being part of it. Thanks for coming on the show. We'll have you on again real soon, and we'll talk about what else happens here. Yeah. And uh, you coming to Canada State? No, I'm taking off to. Uh, oh, you gotta do your Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be getting eaten alive by mosquitoes in plus 36 to 40 degrees. On right. July 1st, wherever you are, <laughs> it's Canada <laughs> State. Yeah, we're right now. It's sure. a, it's not a Canadian uh, holiday. It's a it's a global cannabis holiday. Yeah, uh, it was cannabis day long before the government decided to to try to. You know, infringe on our our day and call it Canada Day. It was Dominion Day when we started it with Cannabis Day, or not we? I wasn't there, but you yeah. know, I, I feel like I'm part of the community, so it, it was it was all of us. But uh, yeah, so um, have a good Cannabis Day wherever you are, yeah, you and too. all the best in all your pursuits. And uh, and I'm I'm thrilled with what you've done so far, and I can't wait to see what you're gonna do. Uh, Thank you, right appreciate it. Thank you so much. How about you too? Well, I know you are. Yeah, I, I gotta go and do that producer thing. Yeah. <laughs> Turn the camera or something, man. You know. Turn the camera. Yeah. You're the cameraman. You're the producer. You're probably the content. Uh, we'll see you next week, my friend. Organizer and all the rest of it. Uh, if only you could have some control over the host and get things right here. I don't know. So, uh, what it's all about, of course, is low barrier access, and uh, what this show is all about is is the pursuit of that. You know. Um, this Spot TV show started uh, almost four years ago now, and uh, at the time there was uh, no legalization, and we were still doing the cannabis kind of substitution program on the street out in front of Van Du. And so uh, I started this Spot TV show, and it just had to be the theme of the show: is that uh, we were going to follow the, the the journey of the cannabis kind of substitution program in trying to establish low barrier access so that people could have you know, reasonable access to high dose edibles and properly priced cannabis that's affordable for people and all the rest of it. Um, it has been quite the journey for sure. There's so much to it. Um, you know, we do, I do try to summarize every show and I don't know what I'm gonna do that this week. I think that uh, enough people know about our journey and enough of the dynamics. And, and the bottom line is, is that um, even though the city said that they would give us a license after three and a half years of doing it at Van Du, 
Uh, we moved into a storefront and did not get the support of the city. We had to move out of the storefront for a lack of a license. Uh, we had applied, you know, for a license from Health Canada long before we got evicted. We also applied at the same time with a, a temporary emergency exemption to be able to continue what we were doing until they could figure out licenses. Uh, and uh, still, here we are, and here we wait. And it's been it's been a long, grueling uh, struggle. Uh, up against pretty amazing odds and a lot of different circumstances that have resulted in us uh, still being here, but, uh, you know, struggling to continue. And, uh, you know, the CSP in Vancouver uh, is not the only CSP. In fact, there's a number of people doing uh, uh, programs where they're providing cannabis to people uh, because other groups know that it works as well. And there's other chapters of the CSP and by far the most predominant of those other chapters has been the East Coast uh, Cannabis Substitution Program. Uh, Chris Backer, uh, leading the way there as the organizer of that uh, program, has been doing it for well over three and a half years now. And Halifax is not Vancouver. Uh, here in Vancouver, it's been a struggle to maintain the, the, the level of donations that are required. We've We've capped the number of people that we can have in the program as it is, but even so, um, Halifax is not Vancouver. Uh, when Chris started the program back over three and a half years ago, it was because he was inspired with what was going on here and what we were doing here. He thought it was a great program and something that was well needed in his area. And what he saw was is that we were maintaining the program, that we were getting the donations that we needed, and that we had upwards of 15 well, volunteers show up, uh, you know, once a week to help us. So Chris modeled uh, what they did in, in Halifax on the East Coast after what we were doing here. Uh, he found the proper location where people could access and um, started handing out cannabis care packs uh, to the people that would line up and get it. Typically a couple hundred people once a week to come and get these care packs. But what didn't happen is he did get the people he got similar numbers of people to what we had over all that time. A couple hundred people lining up for the last three and a half plus years every week to get what it is that Chris is giving them. That didn't alter much from what was going on in Vancouver, but the level of help did. Getting volunteers to help in Halifax is not like getting volunteers to help in Vancouver. Getting people to donate is not like it is in Vancouver here. We're in a pretty special bubble where that sort of stuff can happen. I can, I can attract 15 volunteers. I can attract enough donations to sustain it over a long period of time. Chris has really struggled to do that. He's done a fantastic job. What a warrior. Holy smokes. Uh, for any of us who have a slight in, insight into you know, what he's done to struggle to make this work and how he's had to, 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 you know, to do all kinds of things um, against you know, really tough odds has been amazing. But it's not been easy, and it may not be sustainable. Um, Chris is running out of gas. Chris had medical issues before the whole thing started over there. Uh, that's how I know Chris. He was a, an incredible fellow who had a house fire, and he, his animals were in the house, and he you know, self, selflessly went in there three times. He went into the, the burning house to get his animals out and burned himself really badly. Uh, became a you know a medical user with the medical permission to use cannabis, but found that Health Canada was not allowing him to use the topicals that were helping him with his burns. Um, he put on a demonstration of using illegally the topicals that he was producing on the one arm of burns while doing what Health Canada insisted he had only the choice to do, which was to rub a dried bud on the burns on the other arm. And he demonstrated how one works and the other in flames and, uh, and and he's won lots there he's made great headway he's one of the pioneers uh, of, of the medical program and what we're allowed to do there and he's done fantastic work but he still has major health issues as a result of what happened there that day um, he's got surgeries coming up um, he's really uh, given notice that by the end of august if things don't change if he can't get a few more people to help out uh, if you can't get more donations in with, in respect to edibles and cash, um, this running the CSP is not is not free. It's 
it's not. I wish it was. You know, I mean, it, it relied on donations and donations carried it, but it didn't carry all of it. Um, I had to find ways to subsidize what was happening with the CSP to keep it going. And Chris has done the same thing. Uh, it's somewhere between five and seven hundred dollars on average that uh, that he's out every month that he hopes to get back the following month in donations and mostly it doesn't doesn't come back. Um, you can only do that for so long. And well, maybe if you're Elon Musk, you can do it for long enough that it wouldn't matter. But Chris is not Elon Musk, and I'm not Elon Musk, and uh, all of us are doing it with limited resources. And his resources are limited not just financially, but physically as well, and now emotionally and spiritually. So I'm really putting it out there. If you can help Chris at the CSP in, in, in Halifax, please do. Please reach out and figure out what you can do. It would be such a rewarding thing to do for you. Um, this fight that we're in here is a struggle. It is a battle. It is a sacrifice. It, it takes effort. It takes cash. It takes personal um, beings to, to, to their limit to be able to do what we're doing here. But the rewards are far in excess of what the costs and the sacrifices are. I am so enriched by the good that I've known that has happened as a result of this program that the cost to me personally is insignificant to the benefit to me personally that I've gained from it. And that's what I would put out to all of you that are considering maybe you could help. If you can help in any way, do yourself a favor and help. You'll feel so much better about it. You'll feel like you're doing something and you are doing something. You could be saving lives. You could be helping sick people end their suffering. You can do so much good in helping to achieve the reasonable access. That's all that we're asking for. It's always ever asked for. Give us reasonable access. Don't treat us like criminals. Allow access to this natural plant like as if it was just a natural plant. Maybe even do more than that. I'd like to see the governments embrace this plan. Embrace how much benefit it actually provides to the people that need it the most. And make sure that those people get it. That's the world I want to live in. That's the world that I'm fighting for and Chris is fighting for and we're all fighting for. So let's not let this East Coast CSP go by the wayside after nearly four years of helping people. Chris is beside himself about this. He doesn't want to stop doing what he's doing. He knows he won't be able to when the surgeries happen. He needs people to take over while that happens, at least, if not more. He never thought he was going to be the one to have to carry all of the load of what was going to happen there. He felt that good people would step forward, and I still believe that they can. I believe there's good people in and around the Halifax area that can help, and I would encourage you to do so. What's his, this is, what's his name again? Chris Backer. Spell it for them. So B A C K E R. Okay. Chris okay. Backer. Yeah. Uh, he's the one to get a hold of. If, if you're having any trouble getting a hold of him, get a hold of me and I'll help you get a hold of him. But uh, please, uh, you know, join our team. Uh, be one of the donators. Count yourself among the, the best people in the world and, uh, and join the, the movement to protect the sick people and the poor people, the people that need it the most, to to try to do our best to allow for proper access to people who want to get off those hard drugs. They all want to get off those hard drugs, almost all of them, to a person out there that we're trying to help that are visibly in poverty, in trouble, medical distress, mental illness, and all the rest of it, that are addicted to those drugs. They're addicted not because they crave it, not because they want it, because it feels good. They're addicted because they can't stop using it. Those cravings become so intense, physically, physically intense, that it's almost impossible for people to quit those drugs once they get hooked on them. Shame on the doctors for getting people hooked on them when they could have been going to cannabis all along. Shame on the governments for making that the choice that the medical profession had to make over this. But, like I say, if you can help Chris, please do. Um, on the other side of things, we have a few new groups starting up to, to carry the flag. Uh, in Surrey, we have two of them. Uh, Rosie Rurka has been doing the Surrey Cannabis Substitution Program for the last few months there, several months I guess now, with great success. And all the power to her. And if you're in the Surrey area, you might want to help her. And if you're in the Surrey area, you might want to help the Newton Cannabis Substitution Program. Because 
they're also doing yeoman's work there. Um, some really nice announcements to be made to, on behalf of the, the Newton the Cannabis Substitution Program. Uh, they've entered into a collaboration with another society out there, a fellow named Tim, and uh, they've secured an RV. Uh, it looks almost identical to the RV that we have here. And so they're very excited about being able to take what's necessary on the road to the people that need it. Uh, up until this point, they've been just going on foot uh, to the different areas within Newton where they know these people uh, congregate and uh, providing high dose edibles, providing healthy non-infused sandwiches and other food to them as well, uh, forming connections with people. Um, I had uh, Bridget and Gary here the other day and, and Bridget uh, was, was pretty much in tears and she brought me to tears telling me about a couple that have been people they've been seeking out and helping there that were completely drugged out. Um, you know, eyes closed, bent over, trying to puff on their, their pipes and do their down or their crack or whatever it was. And they managed to get some high dose edibles going with these people. And the other day they were in a shopping mark, a, a supermarket, and there, they, there this couple was. And they were awake and they were alive and they were doing things for themselves. And they were so overjoyed and grateful for those high dose edibles. And those are the stories that keep us going. I mean, we're, we're in stressful times. We're in a stressful neighborhood. It's not easy here. We get broken into all the time. We've got governments oppressing us. We've got all this stuff that really would probably make the average person just go away. But we don't go away. And one of the reasons that we don't go away is because here at the Vancouver CSP, just like at the Halifax CSP and the Newton CSP, and I'm sure the Surrey CSP, we have personal contact with people who are being profoundly helped to the point of saving their lives and, and rescuing them from this horrible addictive state. And that's what keeps us going, is knowing how much good that we're doing. I hope you recognize that too. I hope that uh, as you follow our, our antics here and our journey, that you recognize the, the, the powerful importance of what we're doing. A, that we're helping people that really need it. We're, we're really getting medicine to the people that need it. Somewhere between 20, 10 and 12,000 milligrams of high dose edibles, thanks to our donators and our volunteers, go out of here every day into this neighborhood. Similar amounts, I'm sure, are going out in Halifax once a week in Surrey and Newton as well. I know Newton, and I don't know about Surrey, but I know Newton's going out more than once a week. They're, they're gung-ho about it. They're so enthused about it because they're seeing the good that it does. So that's on the one hand. We're really profoundly helping people that are in serious need of help, people who deserve help. These are not all bad people that made bad choices and deserve their lot in life. Most of these are people who had stuff happen to them. They had traumas that they didn't create happen to them. They've gone through things that most of us wouldn't have been able to endure. And one of the ways they survived is through the use of drugs. And that's how they got to be here. But these people are where we would be, but for the grace of nature and the, and the, and the choices and the blessings that we had that they didn't have. The past that we ended up on that they didn't manage to end up on. They're our brothers and sisters. They're our family members. They deserve our help. So, you know, if you can, um, get involved. That's all I can say. It's extremely rewarding. It's so necessary. Don't let the world fail the way that it might if, out, if good people do nothing. Good people doing nothing will allow the bad people to get away with what they're doing and continue so for in perpetuity. We need to stop it. We need to take control of our lives and our society our families, our friends, our communities. We need to take control of our governments, take it back from the corporations. We need governments that are bound by limits on what they are able to do in the way of interfering with people. We need governments that are transparent in their actions, that don't get closed door meetings with powerful lobbyists armed with all kinds of information and money to sway them. We need governments that are accountable so that when they make the choices that they are obviously making that are corrupt here. When they're choosing to not provide a license to a life-saving harm reduction effort that is well beyond demonstrated the effectiveness and the safety of what we're doing, they need to be held accountable. 
So our system needs to be revisited. Democracy needs to be changed. People need to get off their asses and realize we can take the power back. We can have public servants that are limited, accountable, transparent, and that understand that their role is to protect each sovereign individual. Individual. That their job is not to gather up as much money as they can from the rich corporations to get themselves into those positions where they can do their bidding. This system has been going on incorrectly for way too long, and it's resulting in the homeless and poverty and overdose situation that we're now trying to combat. And they're digging in. They're entrenched. They're well leveraged. They're well connected. They are not ethically motivated. So the battle must continue. And it ain't going to be easy. But the more of us that fight it, the better chance we got. You don't have to do much. No one person can do everything. Although one person could really tip the scales, help us pass the tipping point. But it's not that one person that got us there. One person can't do it all. But if enough people do some things, we can win this. We are legion. We are millions. We are multitude. We are clever. We have our own resources. If we connect with each other, if we unite, or if at least we stay on the same page and, and work towards the same goals, low barrier access, especially for the poor, the sick, and those that need it, reasonable access for everyone, you will change the world. You will be one of those building blocks that led to the ability to have a tipping point, to break the camel's back, to reach critical mass. We need every one of you that gets us to that point, and we need more than we've got. So, you got some free time on your hands. You got some ideas about what might help. You got some passion about what you care what you care about. Some people who you'd like to work on behalf of. There's a walk going on here for people with Alzheimer's, and the and the and the, the tag is who are you walking for? Well, we all know people that have been harmed seriously, maybe even killed by government policy to do with the drug war. Who are you fighting for? If it's not yourself, fight for others. Fight for your family members that you have or the ones that you will have or the ones that other people have. Fight because fighting is way better than quitting. Fight because fighting is way better than walking away and hiding. Fight because fighting is way better than allowing the bad people to win. So please join me in my fight and in our fight to try to overturn the corruption and the evil and the greed that has got us to where we are and demand that your individual rights be protected, respected, and that and first and foremost, before anything else can, be ha can happen, you need to have reasonable access to nature's greatest plant. In a free, democratic country, that should be at least the very first thing to go. And it has to go before much of anything else can happen. Because if you're not free as a person in need of medical help to access nature's greatest plant, the plant that has the cannabinoids and the chemistry that mimics the endocannabinoid system, then you are by far not free. And I personally don't want to live, and I won't live and stand idly by in a world where I'm not free. I'm going to find a way out. I'm going to find a way to solve it. I'm going to find something that helps. Because what else are you going to do in a corrupt world? Just allow the corruption and be oppressed? Don't do it. Don't be, don't be oppressed and don't be depressed. Take power back. Become active. All it takes is one action and you'll be on your way. One phone call, one letter, one email, one conversation, one drive to City Hall, one talk with a police officer, one action will start you on understanding the power of being part of a solution instead of part of a problem. I guess that's it. We'll uh, take a quick brief walk outside and give you a glimpse at what goes on at the Healing Wave RV because as much as I didn't update you on our story, 
we have not gone away. We did have to leave the store. We couldn't get a license. The courts evicted us because of that. And we bought an RV and we've been operating our store from the RV parked in front of the store for two years, 365 days, well, 64 days. It was a leap year in there. And uh, that's what we're doing. So let's go have a look, see what that's all about. Ah, oh, the weekly TS, uh, THC weather report from Vancouver. <laughs> It's gorgeous. Don't tell anybody. That's beautiful. Oh, man. We have just enough people here already, so don't tell too many people. Vancouver is a fantastic place to live for your weather. That's for sure. We got a heat wave coming. There's a heat wave. Well, this is supposed to be it today, actually. It's the heat the wave. Start of it. Start um, of it. It's only a couple of days long, according to my yeah. my Google weather. It was supposed to be 29 degrees today, but this feels very nice. nice. This is not a heat wave. Uh, there's a nice breeze coming up the street here. I'm cool. I'm not overheated. It's uh, strange because I there was a breeze yesterday, but there when you when you got the Langley, there was nothing. Is that right? Yeah, and, and the breeze actually there. was quite cold here the last couple yeah, of days. Yeah. But we've had some pretty good weather. Uh, this is summer in Vancouver, and uh, this is what it looks like a little bit in the downtown east side. Shot down the lane would be fine. our RV. That's the sign. As I mentioned, uh, the window. We, need, we need a wash. We're waiting for a rainy day. Oh, yeah. As I mentioned, <laughs> somebody decided it was the right thing to do to smash our window. Don't know what they gained from that. There was no message left. We're just in a very crazy neighborhood with a bunch of very troubled people. And stuff's going to happen here. Yeah. This is the window that was jimmied open a few days ago. It's got a stopping point right here. But if you really force it, I guess you can get it to go all the way. And that little bit of extra there was enough to let somebody crawl in through there. Wow. Whatever. There's you nothing know. in there. Yeah. We, uh, we won't be deterred. Uh, the people that we're helping need us too much, and we're too determined to help them to allow something like that to make us go away. Uh, it's a busy street here. Uh, we like to advertise what we're doing. One of our main defenses uh, throughout this whole thing has been that we've never tried to hide anything. We've been extremely upfront with all levels of government about what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it and why they should support us. And we make sure that we put our signs out so that all the people driving by get to understand why this RV is here and what it is that we're trying to do. We have lots of people come by and they say, hey, what is it all about? And we love explaining it to them. This is what we're doing to try to offset the opioid crisis. And uh, that's what we're doing. The sheriffs all love us, yeah, yes, sir. But even the even the VPD, they drive by. Most of them give me a nice nod and a wave. Um, they appreciate what we're doing here. I think. I think they understand. Um, and when they did arrest us, it was just because that's what Ottawa told them they had to do. Yeah. Hello there. Hello. 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 Yeah, every day is the best day of my life. Hey, because you have short-term memory loss. Well, I put it this way. For a man <laughs> seconds, that appreciates like challenge, uh, I'm never better. You know? I see. Yes, nice. yes. I, always, I crave challenge, so and, I'm never and, and better. Dexter is all about challenge. He was going to go into the military. <laughs> I am challenged. We talked about <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? You know? Yeah, right? Nice challenge. haircut. Because you're not Dexter. You. Kevin over there. Yeah. $13. Dollars. Oh, pretty good. $13? $13. Dollars. $13 dollars. Looks, I took him $7. Looks like it. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. As you should have. Yeah, that's a great yeah. place. They're the only ones open early in the morning. I see. And so I was like, fuck it. So it's been um, pretty steady here today. Have we helped a lot of people? Oh, yeah. We helped them. Yeah. That's what's the rewarding part about all this, isn't it, really? Is the, is the people that come and almost bring us to tears sometimes when they, they, they express just how grateful that they are. Well, I don't like being brought to tears, but I do like helping people. And I do like, um, you know, fighting the good fight for legalizing marijuana properly. I guess. So you're, not, you're, not a, you're, not a, you're not a crying person at all, eh? I hate the freaking crime. I don't know. Like, you know, I just you don't like don't... to cry. No, I, mean, I don't necessarily like to cry either, although it is very liberating and it's necessary to, to expunge it, feelings. It's heartbreaking. Sometimes. There was this old lady that came by and she it was she was like the most cheerful person. And uh, she's like, it's my birthday. And, you know, and she only had 75 cents for her name. So we gave her a bunch of free stuff. And... Did you sing her happy birthday? 
<laughs> of course not. This was back in like September last oh, year. I'm not oh. And so this was like when I first started and my heart grew two sizes, I think, at that moment. Before I was, you know, yeah, it's a, uh, it, you know, I wonder about people like that because it's like, who's looking after this lady? Uh, does she have anybody else? And, and I haven't seen her again really since. Well, and people like that that don't have anybody to look after them, that's what government is supposed to be for. Yeah, yeah, that, absolutely. That's what I want my tax Well, that's what a society for. is supposed to be for. When did we put yeah. it all in the hands of the government and stop having a community and taking our well, own? the government just yeah. represents the society, supposedly. That's what they're supposed to be all about. And we, as a society, want that government to take our tax dollars and help the people that need it. Absolutely. That, that's, that's what we're all about. We don't want these people suffering suffering un unnecessarily when a little bit of resources could help them and so we pay taxes and then we expect that our taxes are going to make sure that those type of people don't fall between the cracks but what we find here is that there's a whole bunch of people that fall between the cracks that the government isn't looking out for uh, they get kicked out of shelters they get kicked off of assistance um, you know there's zero tolerance for for cannabis in the treatment centers and they get kicked out of there uh, they lose their housing um, it doesn't take much for you to be now set as an outcast, uh, even here on the downtown east side, where people no longer are able to get the services that other people get. You can't get welfare, you don't have a home, uh, you know, so many things like that. So we're here to try to, you know, bridge some of those gaps, to try to, you know, be a, an ear for people to, to tell their, their problems to, that'll get some sort of positive feedback, and to be able to get some actual physical plant matter that can really help them with their anxiety, with their mood, with their... They're sleeping with their whole life. Things. Yeah, so, uh, very important work we're doing here. Uh, we know it. Uh, the government doesn't seem to want to recognize it. Uh, we'll keep telling the story until they do, and we'll keep doing this until they do. And I hope that uh, you out there are going to, you know, take to heart some of what you've learned here today, and and, and be part of our team. Uh, it is excruciatingly important. It is life and death. And if enough of us, and, and Canadians and people around the world, have big hearts. They love to help out in emergencies. Well, this is a big time emergency. This lack of access to cannabis for people that really need it is a serious public health emergency. Um, let's help those people. Let's help everybody. Let's help ourselves. Help yourself. Be part of a, of a winning team on the right side of history that's doing phenomenal good work in whatever way you can. Please help. Um, and in doing so, be kind to yourself. Be kind to all the people that you meet, especially those that it's hardest to be kind to. And the bottom line to all of it, life is short. It's too serious to take too serious. Make sure you have as much fun as you can until I see you next week.